University. The Bobcats of Montana State, the Wildcats of Weber State. It's called Elizabeth D. Shaw Stewart Stadium. And, Ron, today we're going to call it Stewart Stadium. That's right, because it's a lot easier to say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so, uh, Foreman is back for the Wildcats, and we're going to get underway. The first Big Sky game of the year, Bruce. Uh, last time the Bobcats won here at Weber, 1963, in the very first Big Sky football game. And the kick is going to be deep from E.J. Cochran at about the one, two yard line. It's going to go out of bounds. So a mistake quickly for Montana State as the Wildcats will take over first and 10 on their own 35 yard line. And we'll take a look at the offensive unit who put some big numbers on the board last week yardage wise against uh, Southern Utah, a game which uh, Coach Jerry Graybill lost 28 21. And he felt his team played pretty well. The quarterback is Tyler Gladwell through for almost 370 last week. Johnny Gray, the third, is an also an outstanding running back. Last year, he wasn't the third. He had so many yards last year, they let him put uh, three hash marks <laughs> after his name. So. He earned every one of them, too. And he's an outstanding player, a guy that uh, Bobcat coach Mike Kramer is really worried about. Something they need to do today is to control the Wildcat running game. Well, and you know, and you control the running game, but their passing attack was unbelievable last week against Southern Utah. Gladwell is the quarterback. Played well, as we said, in his uh, initial start for the Weber State Wildcats, and he's going to go to the air immediately. Has some time. Finds a uh, receiver who can't hold on. Kyle Ecker was there for Montana State. And uh, that was uh, David. Uh, let's check that. We're going to check the Montana State defense first. A very quick up front. John Montoya, John Taylor, and uh, Cordero are the quick guys up front for Montana State on the defensive end. Kyle Ecker has moved to the outside. Mike McCafferty after suffering that heat exhaustion is back in the middle for Montana State along with David Smith and the Bobcats secondary had a couple picks last week Joey Thomas and Ken Ione. Ione's was good for a touchdown Mobley and Jay Hackett round out the starters for Montana State and in motion now is uh, for the Weber State Wildcats is Harrington Harrington now Gladwell's going to hand off and nowhere to go in the backfield I believe that was Johnny Gray and he was swarmed under by the Bobcat defense and Mike McCafferty was there to John, lead the way. John Taylor was the guy to watch him take the center. He took the center on right there and hit, made the smack. Taylor led the attack. He controlled the center, Ben Olson, and just threw him to the side and that's what made that play. Big John Taylor with a uh, tackle for a loss. An outstanding game last week for Taylor. And it brings up a third and long now for the Wildcats. Splitting out wide to the right side is uh, Greenberry for the Wildcats. Gladwell on third and long. Back to the air once again. Has a man open and there's some contact. Now the flags come. The pass was intended for DeAndre Harrington. And uh, just looked like they got caught up there. You see Joey Thomas and Kane Ione. And Thomas were both double teaming on the receiver. They had him together. Legs got tangled up. Sometimes they may call that incidental contact. In this case, you get some uh, cotton on the field. And that'll give the Wildcats an automatic first down after the third and long play. Let's see if we can uh, take a look at this. And just uh, probably incidental contact, but it's a play you have to call. As Gladwell talking things over with the officials. There you see the call for the uh, pass interference, and that, that's a big one. And when it's second and, and 12, or third and 12, here you go. There's some pressure up front as well coming from the outside was uh, was Cordero. He came in there right about there, pass gets off, and you're not going to see it as it happened right about midfield. So the penalty gives the Wildcats a first down at about the 49-yard line. The first first down of the ball game just underway here from Stewart Stadium on the campus of Weber State University, and it's gray, and he's not going to get much. And the ball, ball is loose. The Bobcats have it. And Montana State comes up with it. I think it was uh, Adam Cordero. Let's wait and see who they give credit to on the fumble recovery. It looked like Adam Cordero came away with the ball. Here you see it again as they go to the other side. The handoff goes to Gray, uh, and he's going to get hit right there. The ball's loose. And on the scram, nope, it's going to be coming away with it on the uh, fumble recovery is Jay Hackett. So the first big break of the ball game goes to Montana State as they have great field position to start their first drive of the ball game. Inside Wildcat territory, the ball sitting on the 49-yard line. Played less than a minute, and Montana State will be in possession. The quarterback is Tyler Thomas. Ryan Johnson, the lone setback for the Bobcats. 
Johnson, who had minus one yards rushing last week against one of the top, top defensive lines in all of college football at Alabama-Birmingham. I noticed that the Blazers were down to Florida State at halftime today, 13-0. But uh, Johnson, a tough goal last week, not much running room, and there he picks up his first positive yardage of the season. He picks up two oh, going over the left side, but you got to give credit to the defensive line on that other side for Weber State. Brian Marquardt was right there to stand him up. And there you see Tyler Thomas, the transfer from Oregon State. Threw for 156 yards last week, and here the blitz coming for the Wildcats from the outside. Now they'll back off, and here they come. Thomas for Junior Adams. Adams bumped, catches the football, down inside the five-yard line, first down Montana State. I'll tell you, you got to give all the credit on that one to Adams because Junior comes back, he sees the balls right there, he stops and lets the uh, cornerback bump it. Maybe we'll see it here. And the Oregon State connection works as Tyler Thomas to Junior Adams, a pair of Oregon State transfers. Do you see how Junior Adams got that, that separation, though, Bruce? He slowed down, let the cornerback bump into him. The quarterback gets off, cornerback gets off pace. Ball's right there, and he marches it to the five. Sylvester Daniels makes the saving tackle, and the Bobcats looking for their first offensive touchdown of the season. Last week, their lone score came from Kane Ione on the interception return. First and, ten for, or first and goal from the four-yard line. Adams has Ryan Johnson in the backfield. Almost intercepted. I'll tell you, there, there was a nightmare there as uh, Spencer Segoda had a chance to pick that one 99 yards. And that was six if he makes the catch. There you see the Bobcat offense, the offensive line, led by uh, Paul Dirks and Brent Swaggart. There you see the backfield with Ryan Johnson and Tyler Thomas at quarterback. And the receivers, Adam Smith, Kara Hassan, and Van Cleve. Van Cleve has been battling some injuries, is getting the start today. We'll see how long he can go. Well, the Bobcats dodged a bullet on that last one, Bruce. It could have been an easy 99 yards the other way on that interception had Segura hung on to it. Second and goal for Montana State. They're going to give it to Ryan Johnson, and Johnson gets tripped up at the line. That was a safety blitz as Corey Van Tuso, the uh, Will linebacker, came through on the blitz. And we take a look at the Wildcat defense. Marquard, Spencer, Pantuso, outstanding at the secondary. And there you see Daniels, who made that saving tackle on the pass to Junior Adams. So the Bobcats now with a third down and goal. But it's always tough to get that first score of the season. And they didn't have many opportunities last week. Had to settle for a couple E.J. Cochran field goals. If you're Coach Kramer, you want the touchdown here because that tells everybody you're here to play the game. Right here is important. Thomas has some time, has a receiver in the end zone. Caught touchdown. And that's Corey Smith for the Bobcats. Smith, the sophomore wide receiver out of Federal Way, Washington, makes the reception and the first touchdown offensively for Montana State. And the Bobcats quickly, Ron, take advantage of a Weber State mistake and get the touchdown. That's right, they take advantage of that fumble. They go 49 yards for the score, but the big play was the Oregon State combination. Tyler Thomas, Junior Adams, both uh, coming over. They get the job done. And E.J. Cochran will come in to attempt the extra point. He's the transfer out of West Virginia. The holder is Scott Turnquist. They're pretty high on this young man, looking for good things out of him. Good snap, the ball put down, and the kick is up and good. So Montana State takes advantage of a Wildcat turnover, and with 12.29 left on the PPL Montana scoreboard, it's Montana State 7, the Wildcats from Weber State 0. This is what free checking is like when you pull out all the stops. Ask Wells Fargo today about free checking and much more. Wells Fargo, the next stage. There's a new place in town where brain power is as important as horsepower. And where renting a little equipment doesn't come with a lot of hassle. Hey, wave to us, big daddy. Introducing the Cat Rental Store, where confidence comes standard on everything we rent. With the tools you need, from skid steer loaders to cement mixers, and the service you'd expect from Caterpillar. Serving you in Helena, Billings, Bozeman, and Great Falls. Call for information. A happy home, loving home, comfortable home. 
is a safe home. Send your kids back to Butte Central. The Montana Power Company shared your concern about electrical safety. Please be careful with power lines and with electricity around the home. Your partner in safety, okay. the Montana Power Company. And the Bobcat scoring driver on, an impressive one. They took advantage of a turnover, and that's some, a problem they had last season. Yeah, five plays, 49 yards a minute, 32. The three-yard pass into the end zone by Tyler Thomas, and the uh, Bobcats on the board. They get the score, and things are looking pretty good to start the season off. They'll kick off for the second time here in this ballgame. Charles Boughton is the deep man for the Wildcats. Remember, Cochran kicked off to start the game, kicked it out of bounds. Went out of bounds, brought the ball back to the 35, but the Bobcats took over at the 49 on the fumble recovery. How about Eastern Washington today with that big, big win? win? A Division I win over UConn at UConn. I believe it was 30, what, 35-17? You got a big win. This one's going to stay in play. Boughton right at the goal line. Oh! Still on his feet and gets up close to the 20 and about the 20-yard line before he's finally brought down. Nick Tonietti had a shot at him back at about the 15 and was going so fast he went by him. Or that he was about to take him apart and he just slipped him a little bit. There you see Charles Boughton. And here's the score for Montana State as a good throw here from quarterback Tyler Thomas. And Corey Smith in the end zone for Montana State. So the Wildcats will take over first and 10 on their own 20-yard line. 12-18 left here in the first quarter of play. Montana State on top on the PPL Montana scoreboard, 7-0. No flag on that one. Johnny Gray gets the handoff and uh, gets nowhere. I'll tell you, right now, the front of the Bobcat defense, Taylor, the guys up front are controlling the down lineman. And that's what happened there. Gray, Gray comes out and he looks like he's going to get some, uh, some play out of that. But up front on that defensive line, that time it was Adam Cordero who was there for him. But Johnny Taylor's been there. They've all been in there stopping it. And that's what's happening. The center and the two uh, guards are getting pushed around by the defense. Very quick offensive front for Montana State. Coming wide to the left side is Greenberry for the Wildcats. The quarterback, Gladwell. On second down and 10. He's had some long situations on second and third down. And here he's going to be hit as he throws. And if he gets by there, he's gone. Tom, or, uh, Hackett had a shot at him. Kane Ione had to bring him down. And a good job there by Greenberry to make the reception. A pretty good throw by Gladwell. Well, this is, you watch this. Gladwell gets hit right there. The ball gets away. And a missed tackle. And I'll tell you what, there was nothing but green in front of that uh, receiver had he kept going. It was touchdown all the way as he was just slipping off. Could have been gone, but a good touchdown saving tackle. And we have a change at quarterback. We've uh, been making a mistake on this one. The, the quarterback in the ball game is Tate Bennett. Gladwell played all last week, and Bennett now in the ball game for the Wildcats. Hands off to Gray. Gray gets a good block and gets outside, and he could go, but oh. he just couldn't stay in bounds. Boy, just grabbing him by the ankles and swinging him out of bounds is Kane Ione, and Ione got just enough of him to throw him out. But again, one guy, or it's a touchdown. And that's happened a couple times on this possession for Weber State. Yeah, out of bounds run stops the clock, but he picked up good yardage, about seven yards on first down. You know, and, and on the defensive side of things right now for Montana State, they have been a little bit uh, shy. As John Montoya, of course, uh, Morosco, Morosco sitting some time. He was injured, and also on the secondary, their free safety is missing. So, you know, they're they're having to fill in. Gray again, this time on a short yardage as he gets up close to the 40 and very close to first down yardage. Tate Bennett, the quarterback. And Bennett, pretty good size at six foot six, 220 pounds, out of Blanding, Utah. He's just a sophomore. There you see Kane Ione, the freshman of the year in the Big Sky Conference last season out of Billings Skyview. All third team All American. Skyview, a big win last night over Helena Capital, stopping the Bruins' uh, winning streak at 26 games. Congratulations to Coach uh, Ron Lebsock and the Skyview Falcons down in Billings. And congratulations, Helen Capital, 26 in a row, state wow. record. Coach Sampson has done just a tremendous job with that football team. Bennett now hands off on, on uh, third and short, and Gray is going to get the first down. Good blocking up front by the Wildcats. And coming over making the stop is going to be Smith. David Smith stops it. But a big hole there for uh, Gray to go through, and he picks up the first down and then some. Matt Hill, 6'5", 290-pound offensive guard, led the way for the Wildcats. It's a good guy to run behind. The Wildcats, they go behind Damian and Wright on the left side. You'll see him here, 3'10", 290. they got a couple big boys there in the big hole. And uh, good job by Smith coming over and stopping that, or he was going to the races. So it's a first down for the Wildcats as the ball sits on about the 48-yard line. Gray, the lone setback for Bennett. 
Fakes ahead, now he'll have some time. And this is where you can have some success against Montana State's defense because they, they pursue so well. And if you have some good misdirection, and that time Bennett came around the right side and saw a lot of green grass in front of him. Well, and Adam Cordero has a chance, and we'll see it here as he, he rolls out and goes to the side. And uh, Bennett's running. There's Cordero. Cordero loses his balance. He's coming in on Smith, comes over again, and saves it with a good ta tackle. But Cordero, very quick for a big guy. Had he not stumbled uh, leaning forward so far, I think he could have got him from well, behind. How about Bennett, 6'6", 220? He, got, he turned that corner pretty quick for a big old quarterback. Fast. And that's a change in quarterback, uh, as we said. Gladwell was uh, doing a good job last, last weekend. We'll have to find out from Brad Larson, the sports information director for the Wildcats. Second down and short now. Gray will get it. He gets spun around and gets outside. And Kane Ione is there to pull him down, but I think he got the first down. It'll be very, very close. Looks like they, they marked it over there, Bruce. It may just be just a little bit short. There you see Ione. As watch this, Gray gets spun around, gets uh, in the backfield. Espinoza had a chance at him, and Ione finally pulls him down. I think you might be right. Let's wait and see what the referees call on this. They're right at the marker over there. Yeah, they don't have to move it very far, do they? We're glad you could join us around the state of Montana and all the great uh, Omega television parties going on. A special hello to all the fans in the Billings Hotel and Convention Center. And it's going to be a little bit short. Ron Murai, Jeff Murai, and uh, all the crew down in Billings putting that party on. And up at the Bobcat Stadium in the Stadium Club. Phil Schneider and the gang and uh, everybody up at the Stadium Club on the campus of Montana State University watching this afternoon's broadcast. It's the first of two as we'll have the University of Montana and Hawaii in our second ball game tonight. We're also going to have some live reports from Pocatello. That's right. We're going up to Pocatello with the Montana Tech Ordigers taking on Idaho State. So third down in uh, less than one. Weber, a lot less than one. Weber brings the Air Force in above us. A couple old planes flying overhead. I just worry if they start dropping things. That's when we're in trouble. <laughs> Here's where your uh, quarterback slaps the left side, and that's where he's going to go. And at 220 pounds, at six foot six, he just kind of leans over and gets that first down. He got a gain of two. And again, they like going over that left side. Damian Wright uh, and uh, Matt Hill over there. It's 310, 290. was a little bit of size to follow. Well, an impressive drive here. Their second drive of the ball game for the Wildcats. They started on their own 20-yard line, and they've moved into Bobcat territory down to the 40, where they have it first and 10. There you see the Weber State sidelines, head coach Jerry Graybeal, J.D. Sollers, uh, former coaching mates of Bobcat coach Mike Kramer at Eastern Washington. A lot of these guys have been together a lot of years. This is like a family reunion here this afternoon with the Bobcats and the Wildcats. Here downfield, the ball is thrown up, and it's caught. Great concentration by Defoe, and Defoe is out of bounds at about the one or two yard line. Justin Defoe did a fantastic job of, again, the same thing that Adams did earlier. He sees the ball, the cornerback doesn't see it because the corner's looking back over, uh, looking at him. He stops, lets the corner bump into him, then gets the separation, makes the grab, and uh, almost gets away for the touchdown. And a big wide receiver, Justin Defoe at 6'3", 205 pounds, a, a guy out of Spokane, Washington, who I'm sure Coach Grabiel had some connections with from his Eastern Washington days. And this is a good throw by Bennett. Good concentration, and he gets it all the way down, first and goal at the three-yard line. You know, Joey Thomas did all he could do just to hang on to prevent the touchdown. Bennett now, full house in the backfield. It's going to be first and goal, and hit and knocked down. A can I own coming down the line and making the hit right on the line of scrimmage. I think that was Ryan Nath. Let's wait and see as he gets up. Joey Gray. That is Gray, 22. Gray hasn't had much success except for the run around the left end. There you see Ione had a big game last week with 11 tackles and an interception for a touchdown against the University of Alabama, Birmingham. I mean, he's playing a whole new position this year. Last year, free safety. This year, moves to strong safety. So it has to learn a whole new way of playing up front. But boy, can he hit. No gain on first down. Second and goal from the three. Gray again behind the big offensive line. And he's going to be stopped short. He was Mike McCafferty making his presence known over there as, as he stands him up, but then gets a nice hit from a guy filling in today, Ray Sebastian. Sebastian uh, has been very impressive in preseason camp for Montana. There you see Gray, who has been a stalwart in the backfield for Weber State the last couple seasons. I wouldn't be surprised here if you'd see Bennett just tap the left side and go that way. Third down goal for the Wildcats. They've marched 79 yards on this drive alone. Long count to Gray. Gray behind the big offensive line was hit in the backfield, got away, and gets the touchdown. Boy, he had a great chance of getting him in the backfield was David Smith. Smith came through, had him for about a two-yard loss, 
slipped through it. Gray did a good job of juking off into the end zone. 80 yards for the Wildcats as they march downfield against Montana State. And an extra point away from tying this one. And to attempt the extra point is Zur, and his extra point is up and good, and we're tied at seven. 7.09 left on the PPL Montana scoreboard. The Wildcats and the Bobcats tied at seven. Stay with us. Eyes on the track. He's ripping the wheel of a 700 horsepower thrill machine. So what does he look for the other days? More thrills. Because Jeff's not just a big time driver, he's a big time fan. I'm Jeff Burton, and with AT&T Digital Cable, you get hundreds of great channels, including movies, sports, and specials, plus a cool interactive guide. Call now for this great offer. Museum quality posters become very special art. Omega's It's Academic posters celebrating Montana team sports, our wilderness citizenship, and our frontier history promise much conversation and years of enjoyment. Both are available now, only $10 each plus $5 shipping and handling. When framed and matted to your individual taste, these expressions of history, wilderness, and sports at $10 each are truly wonderful values. Order today, 1-888-400-9121. Finally, air charter as big as the Montana sky. Edwards Montana Jet Center, formerly Lynch Flying Service, lets you fly when you want. With customized air charter transportation throughout North America. Eliminate the long lines, rushing through the terminal and overpriced amenities. Our fleet of aircraft and experienced personnel are at your service and ready to suit your schedule 24 hours a day. Whether you're traveling for pleasure or you want to make business travel more pleasurable, discover the benefits of flying charter with Edwards Jet Center. And there you see the scoring drive, an impressive one for the Wildcats, capped by Johnny Gray's touchdown run, 12 plays, 80 yards, and uh, Ron, they had a little bit of pass, a little bit of run, and uh, played very well. Oh, that big, big play was Justin DeFore on the about 25-yard catch, and it, it was just sweet. He did a good job, great separation, and the backup quarterback, Bennett, just floated that in. We're trying to find out what's happening with Gladwell, as uh, he was a starter, but we, I can't even see him on the sidelines. I was looking that whole time out, and he's not down. I don't think they left him in Cedar City, did they? <laughs> no, they brought him home. Okay, all right. We're going to try to get down to the third man in our crew this afternoon, jumping Joe McClafferty. Bad kick. Kick is short. The ball bobbled and, and fumbled, finally picked up and kicked around. The Bobcats still have it. He fumbled that ball twice. He fumbled it again after he picked it up over to about the 17 and picked it up and ran out of bounds with him. K.J. Williams, the uh, transfer. We're going to go down sidelines to Joe McClafferty. Hey, great to be here on the sidelines, guys. The field's in fantastic condition. A little shadow coming over that could be a play, but it's good to be back with you. I was in New York last week, had a tryout for a Little League team. Couldn't make it. <laughs> I'm not sure if it was the beard or the balding head, but uh, that, that shouldn't matter. But in the Bronx, I don't think the beard was an issue. <laughs> so the Bobcats uh, kick it around a little bit, but still come up with it first and 10 on their own 21-yard line. Their last drive went uh, 49 yards. And Tyler Thomas is back in at quarterback for Montana State. Ryan Johnson alone setback against this Wildcat defense. Johnson tries to get outside, and he's stuffed. What a play. Big, big play over there. Coming up is... Uh Loans, I believe Eric it was. Loans, yeah. Loans. Really gets this guy there. there you see there Loans is. right there. Boy, came up quickly and makes the play. Ryan see, Johnson, nowhere to go. Johnson came over, and Loans came through, and I don't think he was touched. He went right down that line from the uh, linebacker position. He plays in that inside middle linebacker. He actually, he stunts around quite a bit. He was untouched. Lone 6'1", 225. Out of contact there. Junior Adams and Corey Smith come to the right side for Montana State. The Bobcats sec have it second down and about 12 after the loss on the first down carry. Good crowd on hand. It really was slow coming in, but it's filled up quite nicely. Down the middle, Thomas has a man, and he's open. And that's good for a first down. I believe it's Corey Smith again. Smith having a big game, and that time a big for, game for Smith. 20 yards in a first down. You know, and Smith was wide open over the middle, but there was great pressure put on right here. You watch Tyler Thomas, and just as he releases it, there's the pressure. Good throw. Wide open over catch. the middle. Coming, coming through the middle with the, with the pressure was Nath. Or, no, excuse me, for Weaver, it wasn't that. It was uh, big guy number 86, Scott Turnquist. 
And here we go with Montana State, first and 10 on their own 40-yard line. Thomas trying to get the signals out, changing maybe up at the line of scrimmage. Short drop for Thomas. Has a receiver wide open in the secondary into Weber State territory. And it's good for a first down. And you know, Ron, from way up here, as Junior Adams, the transfer from Oregon State, makes the catch, appears from here that they're wide open. Well, actually, what happened is he, Adams did a perfect job there. They're running a zone defense. He found the seam in the zone and just camped there. He didn't run through it. A lot of younger receivers would run through that. He found that spot over there where the zone was separated, sat there. Thomas picked him up and threw it right to him. He was wide open. Big Sky Commissioner Doug Fullerton has joined us in our booth, and this is a this has got to be the biggest TV booth in the United States. I mean, it's huge. You could put a house in here. You could you could get a kitchen and a, maybe an extra bedroom for your in-laws when they showed up. And <laughs> Ryan Johnson, you're pushing it just a little bit. <laughs> Johnson gets a couple tough yards. You know, that's one thing that Mike Kramer wanted to accomplish this afternoon is try to get the running game going to help out in that passing game. And they haven't had much success, but Junior Adams and Corey Smith and Tyler Thomas have been red hot throwing the football. Well, Corey Pantuso, the 6'2", 230-pounder from Long Beach, came in and made that stop. He came down the line actually on a stunt and got in there for the stop. And they're doing a good job right now on the Weber State defensive side of moving guys around, stunning. They're swinging guys outside, bringing linebackers back inside, and it's been working against the run. Second down eight now for Montana State on the 41-yard line in Weber State territory. The blitz is coming. And Ryan Johnson gets a hole and gets a good, good run on second down. And what's going to happen there is either going to be a big gain or it's going to be a loss because uh, he had nowhere to go. But once he got through there, it was wide open. But see, Corey Pantuso comes through on the safety blitz, or from the outside right there on the blitz, he gets missed. What a hole opens up once he gets through that, and he's close to the first down, just a little bit shy. But again, Corey Pantuso made the last tackle on Johnson that time, had a chance to get him for a loss. Johnson gets through it. Good hard running by Ryan Johnson. There you see Thomas. The score on the PPL Montana scoreboard tied at seven as we wind down here in the first quarter. Bobcats, third down and short. Thomas pulls him off, and I don't feel there the flag comes. They're taught to snap the ball and take a knee and try to get the offside penalty. Let's wait and see what the call is. Well, the defense was jumping. You saw somebody on the left side of the D, but let's see if they were drawn over. No, they got him. It was the guys on the outside. Let's go down off the sidelines to Joe McClafferty. I think my friend Joe's down there somewhere. It's a real deal. And we're going to come back up here as we're having a little trouble with our IFB. And the Bobcats now with a first and 10 inside the 30-yard line. And you call, that's exactly what they teach these Montana State Bobcat quarterbacks. See a guy outside, snap it quick and take a knee. And he pulls it off, gets the first down at the 30. Okay, sorry. For the Bobcats, Adam split wide to the right side. Smith in the slot. And they're going to hand off to Johnson. Johnson has some daylight. And he gets down very close to the 20-yard line. Ryan Johnson breaking things open a little bit this week. Well, he did a great job. He, he was meant to be inside on that. He saw a little opening. Guys in front of him popped the outside. You'll see it here. Delay comes up the middle. Big block there to the inside. Good job sealing it to the inside uh, for the Montana State Bobcats. And uh, getting the block is Swigert. Johnson goes around his outside and picks up almost 10. So second down short now for Montana State. Under three minutes left here in the first quarter. We're tied at seven on the PPL Montana scoreboard. Thomas with Johnson in the backfield. Kara Hassan to the right side for Montana State. The former Billings West standout. They're going to Kara Hassan in the end zone. Just a little bit overthrown. And we're going to go down now somewhere in this stadium to Joe McClafferty. Hey, we're here on the sidelines with uh, Cass Ione and uh, Bob uh, Turnquist. Pretty good crowd here from Montana came down to see the Cats play Weber. And uh, I know uh, you guys got to be pretty excited. Uh, Kane had a great season last year, had the TD this year. Well, Joe, I mean, it's, it's great to see all these people from Montana come down here and support the Bobcats. I think we're heading in the right directions, and, and I'm looking forward to a great ball game tonight. There's a lot of great Montana players, and Rob, your son, a fantastic receiver for the Cats here. And what are your thoughts? You're a coach. Well, you know, they're, they're, they were young last year. They've done a great job coming back. Uh, a lot of experience for a young team, and, you know, we just feel that they're going to be a great team and uh, make some big strides and get in for the Big, big Sky Championship. 
They're moving the ball well today, and we're going to take it back up top. Thanks, guys. Cass, Bob Turnquist, and Joe McClafferty on the sideline in the stands. Joe might never come out. If he knows there's concessions there, Yeah, he's gone. He's not coming out of the stands. You know, he rates the concession stands. When we were away, uh, Junior Adams ran the same play that they ran the play before. He got freed up. The ball just over his fingertips, just couldn't get to it. 28-yard field goal, or 38-yard field goal attempt for E.J. Cochran. Had a pair last week against University of Alabama, Birmingham. The snap is high. Turnquist has it, and he's going to be dropped for a loss, and a flag's going to come down. That'll be a face mask. Face mask. And if that's a personal foul, that'll be a first down for Montana State. So let's wait and see. You can see his head come around with the face mask right at the end there. And we'll watch it. it this is a, just a bad snap. It wasn't, this wasn't planned. Right there, see the face? mask yeah that has got to be a a 15 yard let's wait and see you don't want to you don't don't guess it because you never <laughs> and it looks like they're going to mark it off first down first for down. how about that what for a break? break bad snap you're not going to you're coming away empty and you get the personal file and get the chance to keep it alive you know last week you and conklin got to go to cal poly yep. san luis obispo beautiful day yeah, wonderful day and we great. were in carroll for another great day and this week conklin in hawaii well, we, we, he was in trouble, so we sent him away. Does he know the owner? He doesn't get the good game. We're going to take a look at this again and uh, on the face mask. A break for the Bobcats of Montana State. Scott Turnquist heads up play, bad snap, and he's, he's taught to take off and go. And Sylvester Daniels came up. He grabbed him by the shoulder. He's looking for something else. And, you know, when, when you're in the heat of battle right there, I guarantee you he wasn't doing that on purpose. But he, he got caught, the official right there. Johnson on the first down carry. Dances around, looks for a hole. Now cuts up for a couple tough yards. Well, that whole thing was supposed to go outside. But you got to give a great pat on the back to the defense for Weaver. They, they stamped it. They kept him moving outside. But Johnson smartly slowed down, cut behind the blockers, and picked up a couple because he's going nowhere if he kept going outside. Ryan Johnson, a junior out of Fort Collins, Colorado, Rocky Mountain High School. Good football and basketball programs at Rocky Mountain High School. He got uh, two tough yards there. He's inside the 15-yard line, second down and about eight for Montana State with 2.02 and the clock running left here in the first quarter. We're glad you could join us all over the state of Montana with the Omega Sports Telecasts. Thomas now on second down. And the middle pass was incomplete. It was intended for Junior Adams. Good defense on that, though. And, and who's there again but Corey Pantuso? He had responsibility for the back, followed the back out. And he was right there when the ball was thrown. But he, he had him, had the ball been complete. Yeah, probably one of those plays, as you look at it afterwards, you say it's not all bad that he dropped it because he probably would have had lost he yards. He probably would have lost that. a couple on it. So now another third down for Montana State, third and eight from the 14. And this is something the Bobcats really needed to work on. Last year they got in the red zone and couldn't finish it. So far this year they've been there once and scored once. In this game, they need to get that first down. They need to keep that alive down in the red zone. And Wildcats want a timeout as they didn't like what they saw. 151 left in the PPL Montana scoreboard on Wells Fargo Sports Saturday. The Bobcats and the Wildcats tied at seven. I was diagnosed with diabetes in 1984, and I've worked hard since then to control it. Diabetes isn't a death sentence, and it isn't a sentence to blindness or crippling. It's diagnosed and treated, and you work to control your blood sugar, and you can have a normal life. I have a really active lifestyle. My wife and I backpack, we cross-country ski. I'm not going to give that up, and I don't think I have to. I can live the life I want. My life is in my hands, and I choose to be healthy. Yeah, he's on, that's on headsets. Yes, I did. From checking to online banking, Wells Fargo is like a free ride to anywhere you want to go. Ask Wells Fargo today about free checking and so much more. Wells Fargo, the next stage. Montana's a place where a handshake speaks as loud as words. Where friends are like family. And the best conversation of the day is around the dinner table. Touch America is proud to offer state-of-the-art telecommunication systems to homes and offices all across Montana. And to be a part of the spirit that connects us all. Touch America, the Montana Power Telephone Company. 
And one of our great sponsors of uh, Omega Sports Telecast this season, the Bozeman Daily Chronicle. Rick Weaver and the crew and uh, the sports cr crew led by Pete Fagan, the sports editor. We're very happy to have them with us, as we are all the papers around the state of Montana on Omega Sports Telecast. And we are now third down and eight for Montana State. Tyler Thomas has Ryan Johnson as the lone setback. Long count by Thomas. And he looks in the end zone, goes up over the top, and Corey Smith was there. The ball was a little bit overthrown, and that'll bring up a fourth down. And we have been joined in the booth uh, this afternoon by the commissioner of the Big Sky Conference, Doug Fullerton. Doug, thanks for joining us. Yeah, it's an easy trip. It's about five blocks. Wow. So you, don't, did you walk? Is that what you're telling me? You walked? No, I didn't walk. I drove. Okay. <laughs> And uh, a beautiful day, and Doug, what a stadium. Uh, yeah. Another addition to the Big Sky Conference. You know, this really does help us. Uh, you know, everything that uh, the, the stadium was built at uh, Bozeman, and, and actually there was some uh, architectural, uh, the architects that conferred, uh, you'll see a lot of similarities to what they have here, but they did a great job here. E.J. Cochran now, the ball at the 21, a 31-yard field goal. It's put up, and it is not good. A little bit of trouble on the snap in the hold, and Cochran misses for the second time this season. We're going to keep things right here. And then, Doug, what a great win for the Big Sky Conference today with Eastern Washington. Yeah, I was watching the score on that. That's, uh, you know, we knew that uh, Eastern Washington offensively would be very good this year. Defensively, they had to grow up in a hurry. And, of course, they're, they're, uh, all of our thoughts are with the coach's wife, who's uh, battling uh, another bout of brain cancer. She, she had it, uh, thought we had it licked early in June, and uh, it reappeared on the other side, and she's been down in California. And, Coach Wolf has been down and back, and I know his his uh, thoughts weren't always on the team, but kids did a great job for him tonight, today, back in Connecticut. Bennett now will bring his team out as the Wildcat defense uh, stands a little bit and makes the big play. They'll have it first and 10 for their own 20. The last time they started here, they went 80 yards, and John Taylor meets Mr. Bennett in the backfield. I, don't, I think he turned around and had Mr. Taylor right in his face. And this is some quickness here up front for Montana State and watch number 90. Wow. Great quickness on that Bobcat defensive front. There you see John Taylor. I met John for the first time. He was down on the Student Athletic Advisory Board last spring. What a great guy he is. Uh, bright young man. Very sharp, does a lot around the community in Bozeman. Now second down, 15 for the Wildcats from their own 15-yard line. A lot of movement. We have a receiver split wide to the right side. Johnny Gray, the long setback, and Bennett's going to go right to the air, finds his receiver, and it's good for a couple tough yards. That's Harrington. Harrington is dropped after a pickup of about five yards back near the original line of scrimmage, and it'll be third down and long for Weber State. There you see Harrington. So the big sky this year, uh, Montana obviously the favorite after getting to the national championship game last year, but uh, a lot of teams could win it. I'll tell you what, it's one of those recycling years, but I think we're a little better than what we thought we might be. You know, I think Montana State's a whole lot better. Uh, Weber's recycling a lot of kids, uh, but I think Northern Arizona's uh, rejuvenated. Uh, I think Eastern Washington's going to be good. Montana, of course, is going to be good. I think Idaho State's playing a lot better. So, uh, you know, it, it's one of the things we've had lately is just very, very balanced league. Last year, four teams tied for second. And, uh, you know, that doesn't always serve you well to, to hype yourself to the national press because they don't understand that we have a lot of people. But uh, Portland State's win down at Stephen F. Austin really helped us last week. And Stephen F. has to go to uh, Northern Arizona tonight. And so hopefully we'll get that one, which I think will really uh, uh, plant the seeds in a lot of the people who are voting later on in the year just how good this conference is going to be. Offsides there on Montana State. Uh, so instead of a punting situation, the Wildcats will have one more chance at third down now in five. As there you see Bennett, 6'6", 220 pounder. And Bruce, you know, if you're watching the scores, it's, I think it's interesting. This might be just a, a sh too short a time to, to uh, really get a trend. But except for the top 50 teams, the scores have really tightened up. You watch McNeese play Texas A&M tough. You watch uh, Wolford was ahead of Clemson today almost all the whole game until the fourth quarter. Uh, I'll tell you what, the, uh, the talent level at uh, 1AA has improved. The programs have improved, and it's getting pretty tight out here in the football field. So the shovel pass there to Johnny Gray I think is good enough for a first down, so the Wildcats take advantage of Montana State's mistake. This is just a good call by the offensive coaches from Weber State, J.D. Sollers and the crew. Joey Thomas making the stop, but it's a first down for Weber State. Bruce Parker, Ron Davis, Joe McClafferty, along with Doug Fullerton 
in our broadcast booth this afternoon. Ralph Brigham handling the stats for us. And that's going to be the end of the first quarter. Doug, I'd like to thank you for stopping by. We're going to try to get a little bit more with you today or tonight for the Montana game. But it's uh, the end of the quarter on the PPL Montana scoreboard. Weber State and the Bobcats tied at seven. Stay with us. spend some time down at the Super 8 of Pocatello. Louise was our host and she took good care of us as we were setting up for the Montana Tech Idaho State game. The Super 8 of Pocatello is easily accessible. Just off I-15 was a great stop for our tired crew as Rip tucked us in at the Super 8. Again, Louise, thank you. We appreciated this day and thanks for taking good care of us at the Super 8 of Pocatello. So now first and 10 for the Wildcats from the 32-yard line. The first play of the second quarter and Johnny Gray will get the call. And he is not easy to bring down. He keeps those feet moving and picks up a couple tough yardage. Again, successful on the left side following those big boys over there, Bruce. They get over there behind the, the big guys for Weber State at 310 and 290 right and Hill. But also, I think Gray's starting to get a little bit more action because the passing game has been working a little bit. So they're playing off the two, and it's working right now. So let's say first down or second down and five after the pickup by Johnny Gray. There you see the standout running back for Weber State. Wildcats 0-1, Montana State 0-1 on the season. Idaho State just taking a 7-0 lead in the mini dome in Pocatello against Montana Tech. And great, nowhere to go this time, stays on his feet and uh, gets knocked down at about the 33-yard line. Let's wait and see where they spot the ball. Well, Mike McCafferty plugged the hole in the inside where he was supposed to go, so he got into it, bounced out, and he's going to lose a bunch on that one. As, uh, he just got pumped outside, as you'll see it here. Adam Cordero there for Montana State along with David Smith. And there you see it. Cordero makes the initial hit there. Gray still on his feet. Thomas comes in. And the loss of a couple. So now third down and eight. We see Jim Bauer, who had a lot to do as an architect for Bobcat Football Stadium and a big help on this stadium. Plenty of time. Bennett going to go long downfield. Good coverage there by Kane Ione. Well, there's a lot of touch in there. There's a lot of pushing and shoving between Kane Ione and also the uh, tender receiver, Justin DeFore. But both of them were trying to get position. Nothing's going to come out of it. They're playing physical football. And the Bobcat defense holds. They'll get the football back. Junior Adams will go deep for Montana State. And to do the punting for the Wildcats is Wyatt Kenneth, a six foot one freshman out of Leighton High School. Adams very dangerous back for Montana State. Well, what a beautiful day in Ogden, Utah. Doug Fullerton tells us it's always like this down here. Let's hope they get some snow before the Olympics. Good punt as it pushes Adams back inside his own 15-yard line. Gets uh, one block, still on his feet, trying to get to the outside. And Junior Adams does a nice job of just getting back to the 20-yard line. So we're underway in the second quarter, still tied at 7 on the PPL Montana scoreboard. Finally, air charter as big as the Montana sky. Edwards Montana Jet Center, formerly Lynch Flying Service, lets you fly when you want. With customized air charter transportation throughout North America. Eliminate the long lines, rushing through the terminal, and overpriced amenities. Our fleet of aircraft and experienced personnel are at your service and ready to suit your schedule 24 hours a day. Whether you're traveling for pleasure or you want to make business travel more pleasurable, discover the benefits of flying charter with Edwards Jet Center. 30. This is it. The throw to the end zone of Forrest. Touchdown, Bears! Touchdown, Bears! The game is a whole lot more exciting when I can watch and listen to Rocky on the radio at the same time. I never miss Rocky's sports program, but I hate it when he makes me cry. Hello, everyone. This is Rocky. Rocky makes the game sound so exciting. Jared Bratcher breaks the tackle, Bratcher. Listen every weekday to Rocky Erickson's Montana Sports Radio Program on the Northern Sports Network. Montana's a place where a handshake speaks as loud as words. Where friends are like family. And the best conversation of the day is around the dinner table. Touch America is proud to offer state-of-the-art telecommunication systems to homes and offices all across Montana. And to be a part of the spirit that connects us all. Touch America, the Montana Power Telephone Company. 
And there's some Weber State cheerleaders. We'd like to say a special happy birthday to Michelle Timmer from the Omega Sports Isn't Television Isn't she the one crew. in the middle? No, she's back home with the oh, kids. Troy oh. is here shooting those cheerleaders. And, Michelle, that's what Troy does during these football games. <laughs> so uh, we're just happy that uh, you're back in, in, uh, in town. And... And happy birthday to you. And sorry, Troy, sorry, you missed your birthday yesterday. I don't know why she married such an old guy. <laughs> I haven't figured that one out yet. First and 10, Thomas has all kinds wide of time. Open. And Junior Adams was open. And it's picked off. Adams was wide open. Thomas just throws it over his head. And there to make the interception was Bouton. Charles Bouton, the junior wide receiver, or junior defensive back, gets the turnover. And he was wide open. There wasn't anybody within 10 yards when that ball was thrown. Just thrown too high. Junior went up after it, squirted through his hands, and Bouton laid on the ground behind him. He had slipped down in coverage. Ball landed right in his arms. So a break for the Wildcats. Let's see what they do with it. They'll have it first and 10 on the Montana State 30-yard line. The only other turnover, of course, that fumble recovered by the Bobcats, which led to their first score. So, Bennett, we understand that Gladwell came down with some illness before the game, and that's why Bennett got the start tonight. And he's done a nice job. Gray gets the fake on the handoff. Bennett's gonna go deep, has a tight end open near the end zone, and here comes the flag as McCafferty just brings him down. Yeah, he kinda went to the legs a little early. <laughs> Gee, man, Christmas. Wow, I mean, I'm not sure the ball was gonna be caught, but that was an obvious one. Nice. I, almost, I almost threw my flag from up here. I saw it up here, so I was going to throw it downfield. Yeah, he was, it was pass interference all the way, and actually, I don't know if that ball was catchable. It looked like it was uh, going to be a little bit long as they were both rumbling. You get the, the big guys from the inside releasing. And let's go down sideline now to Joe McClafferty. Hey, thanks, guys. I did find out, as you did, uh, Bruce, that Tyler Gladwell has got the flu. He's walking around the sidelines here with a coat on. Uh, actually looks like he's hanging out in Butte, Montana on a, on a cold uh, Montana Tech game. But you got it right up there, Bruce. Again, you're fantastic. How do you do it? Just keep telling me that, Joe. Just keep, keep it coming, man. <laughs> Okay. So the penalty brings it down. You guys aren't <laughs> rooming together, are you? <laughs> the 15-yard line, first and 10 now for the Wildcats after the pass interference call. So movement on the line, no flags thrown, and Gray will have it on first down, and he is cut down near the 15-yard line. And Kane and Ione again coming up from that strong safety to make the hit, and doing a good job of stemming it out is Cordero. Idaho State now on top of Montana Tech, 14-0. And if we take our headsets off, we might be able to hear Coach Green yelling from the sidelines of Pocatello. It's only a couple hours away. Easily hear him. I know he's waking up everybody at the Super 8. I'd say he's one of the fun guys in this business to, to deal with on these broadcasts. And Montana Tech, always a great program. We're going to have a chance to be at, in Butte a couple times this year to do the, the Ordigger football game. He's really got them going up there. This we'll, year, they, or this week, they've run into a tough Idaho State team. And we'll have some updates from there as well. We have Jay Scott up there today, so we can go up to the uh, Idaho State and get some updates. Second down and long now. Bennett gets the ball off, finds a receiver down inside the five-yard line, and once again, that is Harrington. DeAndre Harrington has had a big first half as he makes another catch, and he'll give the Wildcats a first down and goal. Well, watch this as you, as you see. Plenty of time here as Bennett rolls back. Harrington comes all the way from the other side. He just floats across. Justin Mobley is there to make the stop, but plenty of time. He lines up on the right, comes all the way across the field. Right there, four-yard line. He's uh, looking at what, first and goal from the First four? and goal. Helicopter above uh, head this afternoon here from Stewart Stadium. And on first and goal, Bennett's going to run for it. He has McCafferty up. Now he pulls it back out and throws just it throws it. Good job there. Just threw it away. Had nobody open. It was supposed to be a bootleg. I think all the way that was a bootleg, but it looks of up here. He had that ball hidden. He was going to roll it out. He got out there, and all of a sudden he saw, uh-oh, they didn't buy it. I'm going down, so I'm going to get rid of Mike McCafferty right there for Montana State, his first start of the David season. Smith was there as well, putting a little pressure on. So there's a little bit of he, – he was bootlegging all the way by the looks of it. I'm thinking that helicopter high above is going to land and take Joe McCafferty out of here. <laughs> I don't know. the weight limit on that thing. <laughs> Second down goal now from inside the five-yard line for the Wildcats. And it's going to go to Johnny Gray. Has some big blockers ahead of him. Hey, what a great block. I'm telling you, the biggest block of the game right there. I'm going to get this young man's number as soon as he turns so I can see it. Actually, number 11 was the guy at the block, Scott Dillard. He, he lined up inside, and Dillard's the guy that put his man to the ground. He came in, did the pancake, which freed him up for the touchdown. And big Matt Hill also there, 290 pounds plus. 
So you bring a wide receiver, you line him up inside as a slot, and then you bring him out, and he takes the outside linebacker, pakes him to the ground. Big, big block. Jason Zurn to attempt the extra point, and he does. And the Wildcats have gone on top for the first time. So 11.53 left, second quarter on the PPL Montana scoreboard. Weaver on top over the Bobcats. You've always taught them to be careful with appliances. At the Montana Power Company, we'd like to make sure you're careful too. Hey, Buster. Please have your furnace and other fuel burning appliances checked annually. Your partner in safety, the Montana Power Company. How does Jeff Burton spend his Sundays? Eyes on the track, gripping the wheel of a 700 horsepower thrill machine. So what does he look for the other days? More thrills. Because Jeff's not just a big time driver, he's a big time fan. I'm Jeff Burton, and with AT&T Digital Cable, you get hundreds of great channels, including movies, sports, and specials, plus a cool interactive guide. Call now for this great offer. Join Omega Sports for the third year in a row on Saturday, September 15th for the continuation of one of the oldest football rivalries in the West. That's when Division 1A Idaho comes into Missoula to take on the Montana Grizz. They're one apiece in a renewal of this rivalry, which once included membership in the Pacific Coast Conference. Sit back, relax, and enjoy the game. And they're the scoring drive for Weber State. And once again, they took advantage of a mistake by the Bobcats on the interception and, and go 30 yards in five plays and looked impressive doing We've it. We've had two turnovers and two touchdowns off of turnovers. And that just goes back to what the coaches always say. you got to hang on to the ball. And that's what happened on that one. Again, the receiver was wide open. Thomas just a little over. Vernon Williams and Brian Mullen back deep for Montana State. As the crowd continues to come in here to uh, Stewart Stadium. And Williams is going to get the ball at about his own three-yard line. And he has some blocks. Williams still on his feet up close to the 27-yard line before he's knocked down. Putting a pop on him is uh, Big Mac, Matt McFadden. Back up uh, outside linebacker, 225, 6'3". Big Sky Games from around the country this week. Stephen F. Austin in Flagstaff to battle Northern Arizona. And Montana Tech and Idaho State, the Bengals up 21-0 now over uh, Montana Tech in Pocatello. So the Bobcats have it first down and 10 from their own 27-yard line after the turnover and the conversion onto a touchdown by Weber State. Ryan Johnson, a couple of tough yards up close to the 35-yard line. Johnson had a pretty good first quarter, Ron. Uh, his best quarter, obviously, of the season after last week at Alabama-Birmingham. Yeah, he came out with seven carries for 22 yards. Had his long was eight, averaged 3.1 a carry, so not too bad in the first quarter. That time, Nicky Fainer decides he's not going to let him get away with anything, and uh, he comes up and grabs him, but uh, Fainer after about a uh, seven-yard carry, so not bad for the Bobcats on their first play. Right now, though, they want to develop more of that running game and so they can go back to the air. Toby Winters and Scott Turnquist now split to the left side for Tyler Thomas from the shotgun. Look for Corey Smith. Tried to uh, drop it in over two defenders. Yeah, he went, he went into double coverage over there, and it's all he could do for Smith to get up high and keep that from uh, coming down in the wrong hands. But he was quite a bit above the rest of it. He had a chance to pull her in. Foreman there for Weber State on the coverage for the Wildcats. Plenty of time for Tyler Thomas. The guys up front are giving him the time. He's he's had plenty of time to look downfield. He's, he's standing behind Swigert, Torolo, Henning, uh, Che. And Dirks, they're both give, they're all giving him time. He hasn't had a lot of pressure. And now third down and four for Montana State. As the sun begins to set in Ogden, Utah, some shadows on the field. Just a perfect uh, temperature day today. As Thomas still on the his feet, and he's going to go down Ooh. and gets There's popped. That's not the kind of hit you want your quarterback to take, as he got punished. But Petusa comes in again and just smacks it. And Matt McFadden. Also, on the stick, and the Bobcats will have to punt for the first time this afternoon. Now Nate Cook will be in to punt for the Bobcats. 
Dusty Dodds, the snapper for Montana State. Cedric Foreman waits for him. And the punt's a wobbly one, gets pretty good distance on it. And it hits off uh, Jay Hackett. And it's going to be down there at about the 29-yard line. We're going to go now to Pocatello, Idaho, and our friend Jay Scott. Well, gen gentlemen, the news is not good, I'm afraid, for Montana Tech fans. It is 21 to nothing. Idaho State here. It has been a game of mistakes and a game of turnovers. As you can see, Montana Tech backed up deep on its own six-yard line, punting on fourth down. It has been one of those nights for Montana Tech. A bobbled snap turned into a blocked field goal. That led to one touchdown. An onside kick led to another touchdown. And here's Idaho State going to start their third and fourth drive of the night again inside Montana Tech territory at the 38-yard line. So it is 21 to nothing. Montana Tech trying to dig themselves out of a big hole here at Idaho. Really came on at the end of last season. I got to see my nephew make a tackle there, though. Chris Davis made the tackle on the, on the punt, so it was nice to see him. There's more Davises. Yeah, there's, there's more them out there. Wow. <laughs> no gain on the first play. As we got back just at the end of it, there was no gain, so it brings up second and ten. Johnny Gray was the ball carrier for the Wildcats, coming wide to the right side now. For Weber State is Damon Greenberry. He's had a big first half, and they're going to look to him again, but no, they're going to drop it in short, and making the reception there is Defoe, Justin Defoe, the sophomore. And let's go down to the sideline of Joe McClafferty and a special guest. Hey, thanks, guys. I'm here on the sideline with Sandy Kramer, the most tense person here. What's it feel like to be the coach's wife? Well, the kids have worked so hard this year, and the coaches have worked so hard. Everybody just wants to win a game, and you can just feel the tension in the stands. The parents are all just excited and want the kids to come away with the win, too. So it's a tough game, though. Yeah, right now, the Cat's down 14-7, uh, to 7, but they're not giving up hope here in Bobcat land. Back up top. Thanks, Joe and Sandy. And uh, they're going to march it off now. Let's wait and see what the call is. And it'll be a first down on the penalty for Weber State. It was a personal foul against the Bobcats on the sidelines, and I didn't see if it was a late hit. It came in on the sidelines, and it actually it was kind of interesting. One of the assistant coaches from Weber was kind of patting Smith on the back. Now they're going to say it's against a roughing the passer, but they were they were thanking the Bobcats for the penalty over on the sidelines. Boy, the, the penalty brings it all the way down into Montana State territory at the inside the 48-yard line, where it's first and 10 Wildcats, and Bennett brings his team up. He's had a good first quarter for, or first half for Weber State. They lead it 14-7 on the PPL Montana scoreboard. On first down, Bennett has all kinds of time and has a receiver, the tight end, and it's intercepted. intercepted. It's going to be pass interference. K-9 Owens is going to be called for pass interference. He did tip the ball and coming away with the ball for the uh, Bobcats on the interception is Justin Mobley. Here you see it again. Bennett lots of time, looks downfield, has the ball, and you don't see the actual pushing that happened, but K-9 Owens and the uh, big receiver for the uh, Weber State squad Josh bumping Rebolt. quite a bit. But, they, but they've been bumping the whole game like that, Bruce, and they haven't been calling it. It is pass interference. And so now two 15-yard penalties against the Bobcat defense has brought the ball down inside the 35-yard line, where it's first and 10 on the 33. There you see Mobley, who got the pick. Last week, Montana State got a pick, and it was called for a, person, or a pass interference against Alabama-Birmingham that negated the interception. Mobley starting in place of Lamont Bell, who's out with a knee injury. Johnny Gray on first down, tries to get to the outside. And Keen Ione is there for Montana State. Another flag comes flying in. Well, Keen Ione was there for the stop, and he had a lot of help by uh, Ecker, who was there to help out as well. And at the end, as everything stops, the flag's flying. That's the last two. Personal and it, foul. And this one's going to go against Reepholtz, the tight end who took a late shot at Mike McCafferty. So we've had three big penalties here in the last minute of play. 8.57 left here in the second quarter. Well, that just evens out the pass interference call on K-9 own. My feelings on the uh, pass interference is they've been bumping and shoving each other the whole game and they haven't called it yet. you got to talk to them first before you call. And that's a dead ball foul, so that means that it'll be second down and the penalty will be tacked on to, from uh, where the play ended. That's big. The, the loss of down is huge on that. And again, the play was dead. 
Iona had already stopped uh, the running back outside, and then the tight end came in and smacked the guys as they stood around watching. So their break for Montana State is the ball back now near the 48-yard line. Second down and long for the Wildcats, about 22. Bennett, we haven't seen his stats. His first quarter stats were not bad, four for five. Game. He's playing tough. Gray's running well, he's getting the job done. Bennett now, the short drop, has some time, has some time. Now he's going to run and be dropped by Adam Cordero and John Taylor. They come together for a little defense meeting as he gets back maybe to the line of scrimmage. I think he's going to lose another yard. He has a, Bennett decides to go, but Adam Cordero said no way, and Taylor grabs him by the ankles as you see it here. And good coverage by the Bobcats secondary. Great coverage downfield. 25 yards to go at the 48 yard line. So that'll be, make it now third and 25 for Weber State. That penalty, that dead ball penalty, again, it'll kill your, kill your offensive drive every time. There you see Tater, John Montoya, Bobcat defense up front, Adam Cordero. Weber needs to really look. They're spreading everybody out. They need the time. A lot of pressure coming up front, as you see from the uh, Bobcats. They're bringing a bunch. Third down and long. Pressure. And Bennett's going long. Flag. And a flag is down. The pass is incomplete. There's a flag down at about the 48-yard line near the line of scrimmage. That's in, a, that's in an offsides type area as the line judge gets the call over there. Let's wait and see what the call is. It's going to be against Weber State. And I'm sure Montana State will decline that and try to get the ball back if the Wildcats punt. You know, on that last play, the Bobcats were in better uh, position to receive that ball on the long pass. Doing a good job getting position as Williams. KJ was right there. He, he actually could have had that even better than the receiver. So that punted away. The penalty is declined, and the Wildcats will punt. Junior Adams back deep for Montana State. Back in punt formation. And the punter for the Wildcats Number is Wyatt three. Kenneth. Wyatt Kene will punt. He had a big one the first time, his first punt of the ball game, and only punt. This time it's a little bit shorter. Hangs it high. Adams waving for the fair catch, and he gets it down at about the 26-yard line. And that's where we'll take a break with Weber State leading 14-7 on the PPL Montana scoreboard. 7.55 left from Ogden. Okay, who here has heard of the United Way? Everybody. Now, can anyone tell me what the United Way does? Anybody? Everybody knows the United Way. Please. Good things, but not everybody really knows what we do. All across America, local United Ways bring people and resources together to solve pressing community problems, like getting kids ready to learn before they even start school. United Way, the way America cares. Community by community. Ba, 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 ba. You shy. Well, the Bobcats will have it first and 10 with 7.55 left. Bruce Parker along with Ron Davis, Joe McClafferty, and Ralph Brigham from Stewart Stadium on the campus of Ogden, Utah, where the Bobcats trail 14-7. Thomas on first down gets the screen off to Adams, and it's snuffed out. Great defensive play there by Boutness. He's had a big game. Well, yeah, he, has, he, he had a good play there, but boy, just if Kara Hansen could have held that for just a the block. He had the block out there. That would have sprung for a lot of yards because there was nobody else out there. The only defender out there. Had the block lasted, he'd have been gone. There's the pass. And Adams nowhere to go. Bouton with an interception earlier in this one that led to a Weber State touchdown. Second, down, 13 yards Second and 13 after, after the three-yard loss yard. for Montana State. Toby Winters, who's been pretty quiet after a couple catches last week, uh, split to the left side for Montana State. Former uh, All-America receiver at Rocky Mountain College. They give it to Ryan Johnson, and he is smacked. You can hear that one all the way wow. up here. Popping him there was uh, Pantuso, and he, we've seen him a couple He's times a today. Game. He is playing tough. I'm impressed with Mr. Pantuso. He gets in there and puts a helmet in and knocks people backwards. And, you know, the big thing on that one is the uh, Bobcats, the play before, had the big hole when they threw the screen. There was a nice hole there for Johnson. That time, it was closed down tight. Nothing there at all. And uh, it'll be third and long now for Montana State after a four-yard pickup by Ryan Johnson. Third and nine. Clock continues to run. Junior Adams to the left side. The Bobcats with wide receivers split to both sides. Thomas has some time. Now goes in the screen pass to Johnson. Has a blocker. 
And big Ryan Johnson gets a first down for Montana State. Good call, good throw, great run there by Johnson. And he had some blockers out in front. That guy right there, 67, the center of your screen. Mr. Ryan Shea. Shea. Wow, did he put a hit on down the field. And he broke that for about another 15 yards. Watch this now, as you'll see the big guy right here. Thomas does a good job of looking downfield. Dumps it off to Johnson right there. You saw him on just the top of your screen. It was Che, and I'll tell you, that big guy, and he got downfield at 6'4", 317. The junior from Colorado Springs, Colorado, put a pop on. Che, the transfer from New Mexico. He's a big boy. Boy, what a great addition he's been to Mike Kramer's uh, offense. Here we go on first down. It's Ryan Johnson. Johnson trying to sneak through. Our friend Brad Larson has joined us in the booth, the sports longtime sports information director. Been here what since uh, since football was invented? Since 1979, the sports information director. And once again, he's never worn anything but a purple shirt. He's got a purple shirt, but he looks good in purple. One of the few guys that looks good in purple. He better. It's all he wears. So Johnson picks up about five tough yards, and that'll bring up a second and five for Montana State. Been kind of a topsy-turvy half for both teams. Uh, the momentum have switched numerous times. A couple turnovers have led to the scores for both squads. Thomas from the shotgun on second down. Has time, is going to go long, has a receiver. It's Junior Adams. Adams makes the catch. This will be six. Adams did a great job playing off of the defender. And again, he had the advantage. He saw the ball coming. Did a good job with Sylvester Daniels. Gets Daniels to walk by him, catches the ball, and goes in for six. And that's a couple times today, Ron, that Junior Adams has really watched the ball, and whoever's been playing defense on him has been playing the receiver and not the ball as we take a look at it. This is, a, as you said, a great job by Junior Adams. If we see this at the end, Adams stops running right there, makes the catch, and gets it over. I'm blocking the guy. I was trying to figure out what you were doing. 51-yard <laughs> touchdown pass. E.J. Cochran into attempt the extra point. Kyle Ecker, the snapper, Turnquist on the hold. And he misses the extra point. So the, the snap is high. That's their problem. The extra point is not good by E.J. Cochran, who had such a big game last week. He's missed a field goal here and an extra point. And the Bobcats still trail as we see the touchdown pass to Junior Adams. Again, Adams stops, lets the defender run by, makes the grab and goes in for six. I think they've got to work on that snap. I think they're going to go over on the sidelines and work on that snap as Thomas goes over there to talk things over. And we're going to Pocatello and Jay Scott. Well, the news is not much better here in Pocatello as here goes, Mont as here goes Idaho State again. It is 28 to nothing. So Montana Tech mistakes set up Idaho State for their first three touchdowns. The fourth touchdown coming on about an 80-yard drive. But Idaho State has pretty much had things their way all night. It is 28 to nothing. And Idaho State just dominating the ball both on offense and defense. And as we said, a bobbled snap, some interceptions and turnovers. You can see uh, referee John McDonald marching off a penalty against Idaho State, and that's been about the only thing that has gone wrong for Idaho State tonight, as they are well in front in terms of the statistics and everything else. We're about 13 seconds into the second quarter, and it is 28 to nothing. So Idaho State will go from their 20, and this is about as pinned as far back as they have been. So Idaho State doing very well. Montana Tech not so well. Maybe things will change. Let's go back to Bruce Parker. Thanks, Jay Scott. Good uh, start for Idaho State. Not so well for the ore diggers of Montana Tech. Short kickoff by Cochran, and good coverage downfield by Montana State. Cornus comes up with a ball on it. He's the, one of the shallow guys. I don't think he's ever returned a kick. That time he got a chance at it, and before he could do anything, he was hit, hit hard by Chad Gloom, who we both are impressed with that young man. Chad Gloom out of Park City, Montana. He's a, he's a red shirt a, freshman. Very good looking football player. Built much like Joe McClafferty. And there we see the scoring drive for the Bobcats. And boy, what kind of, uh, what, how much does that hurt when you miss the extra point after going 74 yards in five plays? Yeah, and they got to work on the snap. The snap, every snap they've had has been high. They've got to get that snap down low so it's easier on the holder. So lots of time, 5.03 left here in the second. Bennett's going to go back to pass. It's going to be a screen to Gray. Gray makes the reception, still on his feet, could go. And they say he stepped out of bounds just shy of the 30-yard line. Oh, thank God. And I'm telling you, Bennett almost got hit in the backfield. 
He and did get hit. He got hit and hit hard in the backfield. And but what a great job by Johnny Gray, the third. Did you see him roll the outside? Gray gets the down the sideline right there. He steps out. And had he not stepped out, he was gone. But watch this hit. He gets smacked hard. Kyle Ecker can't get him. And Ecker slides off, and right there they slide him off. Just right there he steps out of bounds. Second down now and short. Second and about four for the Wildcats. Gray's going to get the call and is hit by Joey Thomas as he crosses the 30-yard line. He'll have the first down. And they'll say first down. That'll stop the clock as they move the chains. 4.47 left. At halftime, Joe McClafferty will have uh, comments from both head coaches. And I'll go back to Pocatello and Jay Scott, and we'll talk with the interim athletic director of Montana State, Glenn Lewis. You know, the uh, that missed, you, you talked to just a minute ago about that missed extra point. That could be a huge difference in this football game. Well, it forces you, if you score again, maybe to go for two. Yep. You know, it, can, it can snowball a little bit. First and 10 now on the 32-yard line for the Wildcats. And they fake the handoff to Gray. Here comes the blitz. Cordero hits Bennett. And the ball is picked off this time by Mobley. And no flag this time. And he's got lots of green lots of blockers. Looks like a punt return. He's got a lot. Now there's a flag. And it's going to be on the return. But he's going to get down about the 20. But a flag out about the 32-yard line. But Mobley did a great job getting the interception back at about the 40-yard line of the Cats. Well, lots of bodies flying around. It looks like there. a punt return there. The wall set up for him very well. And it's going to be an illegal block on there. You see the Montana State fans in the stands. There was a block in the back right here in front of us at about the 33-34 uh, yard line. But the turnover will give the football back to Montana State. And here we see it. Good job there by Justin Mobley. And he gets hit. I think that ball sailed a little bit because it, it, as Bennett was ready to release it, he got hit underneath the arms, and that lifts it up. Watch the bodies fly. Right here's one the block there. Comes right. No, it's not gonna, we're not going to see it. It was behind us there a little bit. Johnny Gray there to make the tackle along with Bennett. And the penalty will move the ball back to the 44-yard line in Weber territory. But great field position for Montana State as they trail by a point with 4.07 left. And there you see Tyler Thomas, who's thrown a couple touchdowns today. Last time he's in this area, through the 51-yarder. Thomas on first down to Johnson. And Ryan Johnson is upended and dropped there for the Wildcats was Loans as he makes a big hit there. Lonis, Lonis has had a couple big I got, hits today. I got somebody behind me keeps kicking me when you say that wrong. I just thought I'd tell you. Okay. <laughs> Better that she kicks you than me. Okay. So no gain, maybe a short uh, gain of about one, they're going to say. There you see J.D. Sollers, the offensive coordinator for the Weber State Wildcats. Second down nine now for Montana State. Both teams have got a turnover and scored on it. Let's see what the Bobcats do with their second. We haven't seen him in the shotgun much today. Thomas, across the middle, picked off! makes the tackle and McFadden makes the interception big Matt McFadden takes it all the way down to the 22 yard line and the Wildcats are back in business Boy, what a play for McFadden as you watch it again he just I don't there's no way that he saw this Thomas didn't see him McFadden the only guy there and a big guy fight uh, 6'2 215 rambles and Thomas is going to come in and save the touchdown right there but what a big interception one interception, one turnaround, give it back to the other. The problem is here, Weaver's in great field position down at the 22. Both teams have turned the football over twice here, and there you see Big Matt coming downfield. And you don't necessarily like to see your quarterback have to make the tackle. In that case, you were happy to. Bennett now on first down to Gray. Gray is hitting the backfield and just kind of crawls up for maybe a yard as he gets to about the 21. Mike McCafferty was there to put, a, put the hands on him right away and help drag him down, so it's nice to have him back in the lineup. There you see Wildcat coach Jerry Graybill as he looks camera way. Jerry, a former assistant for Dick Zorns and Mike Kramer at Eastern Washington, has done a nice job. His Wildcats 7-4 and four last season, finished second in the Big Sky Conference. They lost a lot of players last year. They, they lost a lot of players graduate and move on, so they're kind of in a rebuilding year. But um, they like some of the younger play people they have. Whereas, for example, the Bobcats have a lot of young guys back, but they have a lot of experience with those young guys. Right. That's that, and that's the key. Yeah, it's second down and nine. Flags are flying. 
Let's wait and see who's going to be the culprit here on this flag. Well, the way the Weber squad's moving back, it's going to be against them. And both teams have hurt themselves. Five-yard penalty marched off against the Wildcats, and uh, Montana Tech now on the board, Ron. They finally get one up there, 28-7 to seven now. But both teams have hurt themselves with penalties. Both teams have had big plays. You know, the uh, Bobcats would have been down here at about the 20-yard line on that return had it not been for the flag. They both had plays come back, uh, really get hurt by the penalties. So Weber had that big personal foul that destroyed their whole drive. Second down now and 14. Bennett going once again to the air. Good throw to the corner. The ball tipped, and I think it's caught. No, now they're going to say it's incomplete. Boy, that would have been a catch for the uh, highlight film, so he hung on to that one. Jay Hackett there for Montana State on the coverage for the Bobcats. Pretty good throw here by Bennett. And Brandon Bissett is the intended receiver. The ball flies up, and a good, good defense. And Bissett had the ball just tipped a little bit. Boy, he hung on to that one. It would have been impressive. Oh, I was on the wrong one. I'm using the... You got to point him out to me. That's uh, Greenberry. And Greenberry's had a big first half for uh, Weber State. He's going to come out of the game. for the Bobcats. That'd be good, though. Yeah, we'd like that. There you see Bennett, the quarterback. A lot of screaming and yelling going on in the sideline. Bennett is uh, a guy who didn't expect to start this afternoon. He's come in and done a nice job. His squad leads by one. On third and long, Bennett has some pressure. Now he's going to run. Now decides to pull up and throw it, and the ball tipped and knocked away. Good hit there by Justin Mobley. And then Johnny Taylor thought it was a fumble, and he comes in and about takes everybody's knees out going after the ball. But it was a good hit, and the big guy gets up limping. The big tight end for the Weber State squad gets up, but he looks like he's limping Mark Larson. 6'3", 225 senior who, I, who has been injured a lot during fall camp, and Larson has just come back in to play for the Wildcats. And I think last week all he did was hold, which is he's going to do now as Zur comes in to try to attempt this extra or this field goal. 43 yarder. Jason Zur, junior place kicker. And the ball is kicked up, and it looks like it is good. So Justin Zur helps the Wildcats again take advantage of the turnover as they get uh, their 10th point off Montana State turnovers. And the Wildcats have increased their lead to four at 17-13. Still, Ron, a lot of time left, 157 left here in the first half. Yeah, right now the Bobcats are feeling they have to answer. They've got to bring the ball down, get good field position. They've actually had some pretty good positioning off the kickoff returns. They've been able to get it down there. And we're going back to Pocatello and Jay Scott. Well, gentlemen, things have turned a little bit more in Montana Tech's favor. It is now 28 to 7, and Montana Tech has just recovered a fumble at the Idaho State 34-yard line. So the second really deep drive, if this 34-yard line is considered deep, and they will hand it off and driving up the middle for little, if any, gain is Justin Johnson. But the turnover earlier on that led to the uh, Montana Tech touchdown. Chris Haynes returned an interception to the 16-yard line, and LaProuse took it in from the two. That coming uh, just about a minute and a half ago. And again, this fumble recovery just now at the 35-yard line, giving Montana Tech a chance to cut the 21-point deficit down, possibly even more. And as Kelly goes to the far side, wide receivers this side as well. We've been bouncing back and forth between Willard and Ramaker at quarterback. And Ramaker is going to throw it up and throw it in. Complete good coverage, as you can see, over on the far side. And let's go back to Bruce. Thanks, Jay, as the kickoff is just going to be down. I think that was a court. Daryl. Clark well, is the one who Clark. covered that. Yeah, the redshirt freshman out of Belgrade, Montana. It was a squib kick. They didn't want him to return it. They hit Clark, and he was going to pick it up. He finally just fell down on it. And a smart move, actually. Yeah, and pretty good field position to start Great with 155 left. There you see Bo Clark uh, and uh, some of the Bobcats Your talking with Mike Kramer. Coach Kramer and Bo. Bo is, a, is uh, just a talented athlete out of Belgrade High School. He was a tight end and then just switched over to start playing defense for see, Montana State. And Coach working him right there. I mean, right away working him on, hey, you did it right, do this, do that. Here Thomas, goes that draw again. To Ryan Johnson, still on his feet, gets up to the 40-yard line. Good extra effort there by Ryan. What a delay they take on that. It's, it's a play where the quarterback gets the ball and just stops, and everybody kind of keeps running, then he hands it off on the draw, but they take a huge delay on that. It's a real strange play, the way they designed it. Almost back to that Statue of Liberty play. Is that yeah, it takes a lot of time to develop, and at this speed, watch this now. 
in, in real time, trust me, it's slow. Right now it's slowed down. Now he hands it off. It takes forever to develop. Johnson got five, second and five as the clock down near 120 left here in the first half. Thomas has good time again, looking for Junior Adams. Adams is open. He's Adams. got him. Junior Adams down inside the 15 yard line and a first down for Montana State. 45 yard pass play to Junior Adams. I'll tell you what, that was big. And Adams had that ball. He, he was beyond his man by quite a bit. Here we'll see Thomas. Now this is a re replay of the, uh, of the draw before, but a 45 yard pass play. And it was a dandy. And Junior there, we see him going out of bounds. But the Bobcats have it first and 10 on the Weber State 15 yard line, 111 left. They need to come away with something here. They, they, right now it's important for the Bobcats to get a score here before the half and uh, show these people that they're here to play. Last time they met, they were tied 7-7 at the half up in Bozeman. They were, and, and Weber State scored 21 unanswered in the second half to get come away with the 28-7 victory at Bobcat Stadium. Thomas on first down to Ryan Johnson. They string him out, string oh. him out, and luckily uh, gets back inside the 20, but he's still going to lose three or four and take a big chunk off the clock of time. I'll tell you, the big play there was uh, from the big man up front, and I'll have to ch check the... Uh, the play on this guy is Nicky uh, Finer. He stretched that out. He came from the inside and forced Johnson to go deeper than he really wanted to on the play. And that forced the play to get strung out to the sideline just by him getting depth. We got a timeout by the uh, Bobcats. Bobcats wisely take the timeout. The clock had gone down to 46 seconds left. And it'll be second down and about 13 for Montana State on the 19-yard line. I was actually shocked to see the Bobcats put a running play in there with the clock being down near a minute. You'd think they'd be going to the air. And we're going to go back to Pocatello and Jay Scott. And as we come back, here goes Idaho State and Mike Jones breaking from inside his 20-yard line. And he breaks it across midfield out to the 47-yard line of Montana Tech. It is still 28-7. Montana Tech, that last drive turned into an interception. Idaho State picking it off at about the 6-yard line. And now they've moved into Montana Tech territory into the Tech territory at the Tech 47-yard line. We have 8.45 until halftime here. As we said, the 28 to nothing, the early 28 to nothing lead, Tech coming back with the touchdown, and then a bit of an opportunity, but the interception ended that particular drive. So at the 48-yard line, Idaho State going to try to add to it as we have less than eight and a half minutes to play. The quarterback is Doug Bauman, and he will hand it off. And it's been like this pretty much all night, driving up the middle. Mike Jones picking up three and four yards pretty much any time that he wanted to. On the tackle for Montana Tech, among others, Caleb Zimmerman. A second down and second and eight. Montana Tech trying to hang on. Let's go back to Bruce Parker. Thanks, Jay. It's now second down and long for Montana State. Thomas from the shotgun across the middle. Corey Smith just drops it. Oh. And then to make it worse, he gets popped. Oh, and I think he heard the footsteps coming in as uh, Spencer Sagoda puts a smack on him. But this is one you got to catch. I'm sorry. This is the receiver has to do this. It's going to go against the quarterback, but that ball was there. And so was the hit. And, <laughs> wow. And another timeout for Montana State as Thomas kind of walks off shaking his head a little bit. I'll tell you, you know, the footsteps were there, but that's one. You catch it, you're at the five-yard line. You're first and goal at the five with about 40 seconds. Exactly what you need right now. And we're going to go back to Pocatello and Jay Scott. And Idaho State continuing to drive. It's now first and 10. Idaho State at the 34-yard line just a few seconds ago. A slant in completion to Jermaine Anderson. 28-7. The Bengals leading the diggers here as we have 7.25 to play until halftime. And Idaho State will send three wide receivers to the right side, two to the left. Nobody in the backfield. And Bowman going to flip it out here quickly. And it is complete to James Gilry. And he is stacked up little if any gain by Montana Tech. That Tech defense has been out here most of the night. As we mentioned, a uh, blocked field goal setting up the first touchdown an interception, a, a try again, a recovered onside kick, the, the second score, an interception, the third score, a fumble, the fourth score, and the Tech defense has been out here most of the night. So second down and eight for Idaho State. And again, the three wide receivers coming to the left. Let's go back to Bruce Parker. And a big third down play, thanks Jay, for Montana State from the 19-yard line. Thomas has some time. 
goes cross field and just throws it out of bounds. It was intended for Junior Adams. Good coverage there by the secondary for Weber State. Really nobody open. You know, actually there was a man open down in the end zone, down in the far corner, but I don't think they got a chance to look that way. And uh, down there was Corey Smith in the far right corner, but I don't think Thomas got a chance to look over at him, but he was open in the corner. So E.J. Cochran now will come in. This will be put down. The play on this guy is Nicky uh, Finer. He stretched that out. He came from the inside and forced Johnson to go deeper than he really wanted to on the play. And that forced the play to get strung out to the sideline just by him getting depth. We got a timeout by the uh, Bobcats. Bobcats wisely take the timeout. The clock had gone down to 46 seconds left. And it'll be second down and about 13 for Montana State on the 19-yard line. I was actually shocked to see the Bobcats put a running play in there with the clock being down near a minute. You'd think they'd be going to the air. And we're going to go back to Pocatello and Jay Scott. And as we come back, here goes Idaho State and Mike Jones breaking from inside his 20-yard line. And he breaks it across midfield out to the 47-yard line of Montana Tech. It is still 28-7. Montana Tech, that last drive turned into an interception. Idaho State picking it off at about the 6-yard line. And now they've moved into Montana Tech territory into the Tech territory at the Tech 47-yard line. We have 8.45 until halftime here. As we said, the 28 to nothing, the early 28 to nothing lead, Tech coming back with the touchdown, and then a bit of an opportunity, but the interception ended that particular drive. So at the 48-yard line, Idaho State going to try to add to it as we have less than eight and a half minutes to play. The quarterback is Doug Bauman, and he will hand it off. And it's been like this pretty much all night, driving up the middle. Mike Jones picking up three and four yards pretty much any time that he wanted to. On the tackle for Montana Tech, among others, Caleb Zimmerman. A second down and second and eight. Montana Tech trying to hang on. Let's go back to Bruce Parker. Thanks, Jay. It's now second down and long for Montana State. Thomas from the shotgun across the middle. Corey Smith just drops. Oh. And then to make it worse, he gets popped. Oh, and I think he heard the footsteps coming in as uh, Spencer Segoda puts a smack on him. But this is one you got to catch. I'm sorry. This is the receiver has to do this. It's going to go against the quarterback, but that ball was there. And so was the hit. And, <laughs> wow. And another timeout for Montana State as Thomas kind of walks off shaking his head a little bit. I'll tell you, you know, the footsteps were there, but that's one. You catch it, you're at the five-yard line. You're first and goal at the five with about 40 seconds. Exactly what you need right now. And we're going to go back to Pocatello and Jay Scott. And Idaho State continuing to drive. It's now first and 10. Idaho State at the 34-yard line just a few seconds ago. A slant in completion to Jermaine Anderson. 28-7. to The Bengals leading the diggers here as we have 7.25 to play until halftime. And Idaho State will send three wide receivers to the right side, two to the left. Nobody in the backfield. And Bowman going to flip it out here quickly. And it is complete to James Gilry. And he is stacked up. Little, if any, gain by Montana Tech. That Tech defense has been out here most of the night. As we mentioned, a uh, blocked field goal, setting up the first touchdown, an interception, a, a try again, a recovered onside kick, the, the second score, an interception, the third score, a fumble, the fourth score, and the Tech defense has been out here most of the night. So second down and eight for Idaho State. And again, the three wide receivers coming to the left. Let's go back to Bruce Parker. And a big third down play, thanks Jay, for Montana State from the 19-yard line. Thomas has some time. Goes cross field and just throws it out of bounds. It was intended for Junior Adams. Good coverage there by the secondary for Weber State. Really nobody open. You know, actually there was a man open down in the end zone, down in the far corner, but I don't think they got a chance to look that way. And uh, down there was Corey Smith in the far right corner, but I don't think Thomas got a chance to look over at him, but he was open in the corner. So E.J. Cochran now will come in. This will be put down at the 25-yard line. It'll be a 35-yard field goal. Thomas on the sidelines, not real happy. And a good snap. The ball put down, and the kick is up, and it is not good. Boy, they, if they could put those down, they'd be in a lot better. It's a, almost back to last year. You got down that red zone and couldn't finish. That's what, three now that they missed? So the Bobcat kicking game has uh, hurt them a little bit here in the first half with 31 seconds left. 
you know, that's, and, and again, that goes back to the missed extra point. Now you have two field goals that have missed, and that kicking game is something that Coach Kramer has really tried to concentrate on. That time the snap was good. The snap was back. It was, it was handled. Everything looked good. The kick just pushed to the right. So the Bobcats now will go back on defense, and Weber State's just going to take a knee here. Bennett, who's had such a good first half and has helped his team to a 17-13 lead. And that will probably do it. We're going to try to get down with Joe McClafferty on the sideline with uh, Wildcat coach Jerry Graybeal. As we go out at halftime, the clock's still running. You know, a first half of football where both teams hurt themselves quite a bit on offense with a lot of penalties and just not able to get certain things done on the offensive side. It's still a close game, though. So you have a 17-13 game here at the half. I, I'm sure the Bobcats would like to see that last field goal. We're going to talk about the kicking game, I'm sure, at the half. And now we're going to try to go down on our sidelines to Joe McClafferty and Coach Grabeel. Coach Grabeel, there you see Bobcat coach Mike Kramer, his team trailing by four at the half. Bobcats will get the football to start the second half. Coach Graybeal doing a radio interview before Joe McClafferty gets to him. Yeah, the radio guy caught him right away, so he's, uh, Joe's waiting his turn. He's being very polite. He's right in the middle of the band. Give him a tuba. <laughs> See what he, he, looks like the, he looks like the drummer. Joe's the guy, the guy that hold the drum. And now let's go down sidelines to Joe McClafferty and Weber State coach uh, Jerry Graybeal. He's gonna... not, coach is heading back in. He's not going to stay and talk. Well, they're still walking down the side. Maybe they're trying to get to the end of the, the the other end of the field so he can kind of stop and not have anybody else talk to him. Joe walking down the field with Coach Graybeal. And here we go. Let's go down on our sideline now to Joe McClafferty and Coach Jerry Graybeal. And it's halftime in the PPL. We're having some trouble with the microphone. Halftime from Ogden, Utah and Stewart Stadium. The Wildcats on top of Montana State, 17-13. Back with more and halftime. Stay with us. ...with a dramatic performance of Aaron Copeland's great fanfare for the common... Join Omega Sports on Saturday, September 8th at 10 p.m. when the Montana Grizzlies say aloha from Maui. The Grizz take on the Division I Hawaii Rainbow Warriors. This is a special presentation sponsored by Mountain Pacific Quality Health Foundation. Promoting and evaluating quality health care in Montana, Wyoming, Hawaii, and the Western Pacific. Sit back, relax, and enjoy the games. Yeah. While progress should never come to a halt, there are many places it should never come to at all. So we work Welcome locally with communities, businesses, and people like you to save precious places around the world forever. I'm Paul Newman. Help the Nature Conservancy save the last great places. No, the mic couldn't have been on because the mic is on now and I can hear it. Well, there you see the D Event Center on the campus of Weber State University. That's where they play basketball. They call it sometimes the Purple Palace, and they've been very successful with a lot of NCAA teams that have gone on to, and won Big Sky titles there for the Wildcats of Weber State. We're going to go down on our sidelines when we get a chance now with Joe McClafferty. We didn't have a chance to hear the interview with Coach Graybeal, but Joe, I bet you you'll tell us what he had to say. And we're still having some trouble with the mic down I in think, the field. I think it's Joe's personality. He just sucks <laughs> the power out of the batteries. He just sucks it right out of that thing. He just eats it up. 
And we're going to take a break and go to Idaho State Pocatello as the Bengals host the Montana Tech Ore Diggers. Jay Scott. And we're back here at Pocatello, 3.50 till halftime, and Montana Tech driving there at their own 46-yard line, a first and 10, as a combination of quarterback draws and some timely passes. The blitz is on. Ramaker's going to hand it off and stacked up up the middle for almost no gain for Montana Tech is Justin Johnson. 3.30 till halftime. It is 34-7. Idaho State jumping out to the very quick 28 to nothing lead in the first quarter. A lot of those scores, as we have mentioned a few times, set up by Montana Tech mistakes. Interception, fumble, a blocked field goal after a bad snap, and a very well-placed Idaho State onside kick leading to another score for Idaho State. So second down and 12 as we come down to three minutes till halftime and the quarterback draw and Ramaker is across midfield and has some running room into the into Idaho State territory at the 40 yard line. It has been that kind of a drive for uh, Montana Tech. Matt Poff on the tackle among others for Idaho State. Test, test, one, and two, test. Tech sets up first and 10 at the Idaho State 40 yard line. The first and ten wide receivers both ways. Two wide outs to the near side, one to the far side. And Ramaker with two sets back, setbacks calling his signals and gives it off to the second man and nothing doing as Idaho State was ready for that one. The handoff to Justin Johnson and he was snowed by Josh Whitworth. So a second down and 14 with 237 left here Jesus. in Pocatello. 34 to seven, the Bengals over the Ore Diggers. The play coming in from the bench for Montana Tech. Connor Hogan bringing it in, relaying it to Ramaker, and he relays it to everybody else. And you can see Ramaker setting up with the second down and five. Calling his signals, one setback, play fake, complete to the far side to the wide receiver Renzi Kelly and Kelly is close to the first down and they will spot him down after a gain I'm sorry spot him down after a gain of about four yards it'll set up a third down and seven they're, they're Ernie James on the tackle I might have so to at the 36 him. yard line Tech with possibly their best drive of the night other than the touchdown drive that made it to the, cut the lead to 28 to 7 at one point. Wide receivers both on third down and Ramaker you can see the one setback looks right throws right flanker screen incomplete intended for Renzi Kelly but there were probably four Idaho State defenders right there and if he didn't hear them coming he probably would have wanted to. So fourth down, the ball at the 36 yard line. And at 34 to seven, I believe it's safe to say that Coach Green and crew will issue the field goal and see what they can do here. So wide receivers both ways, two to the right, one to the left, the shotgun on fourth down. Ramaker, complete over the middle, and what a hit, but good enough for the first down. Complete to Jeremy Butcher, and he was punished by Josh Robinson, but not until he picks up the first down at the 23-yard line. He really took a pop, but made the reception first. So spotted at the 23-yard line, and it is first and 10 for Montana Tech. as they have had some success spreading out the Idaho State defense over just the past couple minutes. Two wides to the right, one to the left. Tech show, or, uh, Idaho State showing blitz, and Ramaker gets away from the blitz. It is complete down here to the near side and inside the five-yard line. This is Ryan McGuire. Jeremy Henrik knocks him out of bounds, but it'll be first and goal for Montana Tech, and they'll spot it at the four-yard line. So Tech finding the passing game, and now Montana Tech is going to call timeout and regroup and possibly work on uh, punching this ball into the end zone. 
a minute two until halftime. It is Idaho State 34 and Montana Tech 7. As we said, some Tech mistakes uh, getting them into the hole early. A block field goal and a drive from the Tech 29-yard line led to the Idaho State touchdown, the first one. They recovered the onside tick, had to go 48 yards for the second touchdown. The third scoring drive was 12 yards after an interception return. And then there was a fumble recovery out at midfield, and that gave Idaho State the opportunity to set up the fourth touchdown of the evening. So the timeout by Montana Tech is their first, and Ramaker's been over at the sideline talking things over. So first and 10, and maybe some momentary confusion, Connor Hogan, you saw him possibly looking back again, going to the left side. Two wide receivers to the right. In motion is McGuire through your picture. And Ramaker slips and falls, and he's down right there. Well, it might have been interesting if he'd had the chance to finish it off. But now another timeout being taken, I would imagine, again by Tech. We will wait for the signal from referee John Maloney, and it is, in fact, a tech timeout. It is their second, and that will leave them with one, a second down and goal with the ball now at the eight-yard line. Weber State and Montana State, that ball game is in, a, a half, in the halftime. It is 17-13, and we'll be going there for the third quarter. Here we have 50 seconds until halftime, here being Pocatello, Idaho, and Holt Stadium, the home of the ISU Bengals. So Ramaker has been to the sideline discussing things, and the situation that presents itself is a second down and eight. And here comes Montana Tech. They send Kelly first to the left and now to the right, some momentary confusion Watson goes to the left side. Ramaker with the one setback. Motion as well now to the left side. Ramaker looking. The flanker screen. And it is caught at the eight-yard line. Nice catch by Patrick Watson. And he'll pick up maybe one on the deal. A third down. Officially, they give him two. Third down and seven. And here comes Tech at 27 seconds till halftime. The hurry up offense. Ramaker. Tipped and incomplete. Intended on the goal line for Mike Raleigh out of the backfield. And it will be fourth down. At 34 to 7, we see the kicking unit coming on for Montana Tech. They had a bobbled snap earlier on tonight that led to a block kick, and that helped Idaho State to the first touchdown. But this one will be a field goal attempt for Montana Tech. So the attempt for Montana Tech and Chris Casney. It's blocked, the second field goal that has been blocked tonight by Idaho State. Idaho State recovers at the 13-yard line, and with 16 seconds till halftime, let's go back to Ogden, Utah, and Bruce Parker. Thanks a lot, Jay Scott. A tough break there for the Ore Diggers. We'll take a break at halftime on the PPL Montana scoreboard. Weber State leading Montana State 17-13. Back with Joe McClafferty and Interim Athletic Director Glenn Lewis. Stay with us. What you do if you smell a natural gas leak in your home isn't nearly as important as what you don't do. Please leave the telephone and lights alone and call us from a neighbor's house. Your partner in safety, the Montana Power Company. Education and training are the keys to staying competitive. With time so precious, 
How do you get the most out of your education dollar? InterSoft Education is focused on providing high-level practical training associated with Internet technologies. confused. Can you give me an example? You've heard of the United Way. Yeah. Can you tell me what the United Way does? That's the look. Roll cameras. Confused about the United Way? Across America, local United Ways bring people and resources together to solve community problems, like giving people in need the tools to work their way out of poverty and build a better life. The United Way, the way America cares community by community. This Omega Sports Telecast is brought to you by Wells Fargo, The Next Stage, Quest, Ride the Light, Quest, The Montana Power Company, delivering reliable electricity and natural gas, Touch America, Light, Speed, Now, and AT&T Broadband, your local cable provider and much more. Well, the Bobcats down at half by four to Weber State in Ogden, Utah. Let's go down sideline. Joe McClafferty and MSU's interim athletic director, Glenn Lewis. Hey, Bruce. Here's a guy you know on the sideline with me, uh, Glenn Lewis. Glenn is the interim uh, athletic director at Montana State right now, and he's got the task of finding someone to take his job. Tell us about the search right now for a new athletic director. Sure. We uh, started uh, several weeks ago. Uh, Vice President Alan Yarnell and, and uh, President Gamble did identify the uh, members of the search committee. We, at that point, uh, pull the committee together. We're refining, if you will, the position vacancy notice that'll go out and be advertised. We're doing some research on a, uh, the possibility of hiring a, uh, a hiring firm to, to assist us in this. But in any event, the, uh, the process has started. We are well on our way uh, uh, to go ahead and try to identify some candidates for the position. And hopefully sometime uh, later this fall, we'll bring some folks to the campus and and uh, have an opportunity to meet those people and decide who's going to be the new, new AD at Montana State University. Well, at MSU, you're, you're a familiar face. You've been there 35 years. What are some of the things you're doing right now in your interim position? Uh, as interim director, we're just looking at the program. Uh, I've been there about two uh, months now. We've started to take a look at everything we possibly can to find out how we might improve the program. Uh, one of the things we've done uh, initially was to bring in a consulting firm that has taken a look at the financials of the program. Uh, we expect a report from them sometime in the next few weeks to give us some results that we can take a look at, possibly make some changes to improve the program financially and move ahead with it. And then what happens to Glenn Lewis? What does he do? Well, my, my plan originally was to retire at the uh, uh, end of December. I've put that on hold for a few months until we get a new uh, athletic director hired. But at that point, I'll go ahead and retire from Montana State University. Well, sounds like things are moving towards a new AD at MSU. Let's go back up to Bruce Parker. Thanks a lot, Joe. And Glenn Lewis, an outstanding man. Glenn Lewis, the interim athletic director at Montana State. We're going to try to go down uh, to Joe McClafferty. He's already got Coach Mike Kramer uh, on the sideline. And uh, we're going to go down to Joe and Coach Kramer, who was running onto the field, and they stopped him and got him. Joe with the spiffy jacket on the sideline. Trying to stay warm down here on the jacket with the jacket on. Warm. Yeah, definitely, Coach. Hey, uh, you guys beat him long a couple times. Pretty good first half. Missed some kicks. What's your thoughts? The team that runs the ball the best here in the second half is going to win this one going away. Uh, it comes down to a game of physicality. Both offenses are essentially the same. Don't really like to throw the ball that much. Rather see who can run the ball better in the second half. Yeah, was it somebody said that you, you, you make a pass, there's a couple things that can be happening, <laughs> and, they're, and they're bad, interceptions yeah, and incompletes? Long. Well, I'll tell you what. The main thing is, at some point in our career here, our offensive line's got to assert itself, see if we can get it done here in the next 30 minutes. Great. Good luck in the second half, Coach. Up top to Bruce and Ron. That snazzy dressing Joe McClafferty on the sideline. Bobcats down by four and a half. We'll take a break, come back with our second half kickoff on uh, Wells Fargo Sports Saturday. The Bobcats trail by four. Are in. 
with us to solve your transportation problems. But that may not mean a new set of tires. And we're back at Stewart Stadium, set to go with our second half kickoff. Bruce Parker along with Ron Davis, Joe McClafferty, and uh, Ralph Brigham from Stewart Stadium. Beautiful night in Ogden, Utah. The dedication for this newly refurbished stadium. And the kickoff is going to go deep and out of bounds. And the Bobcats, Joe, will start with good field position on their own 35. Well, the Bobcats are in good field position on that one with the uh, kick going out of bounds. That's two of those that we've seen here uh, so far this evening. As we look at the halftime stats, uh, both teams have, uh, you know, moved the ball pretty well. Actually, if you take a look at the uh, passing, 192 yards for Thomas compared to 83 for Bennett. Total yards, 223 to 119. Bobcats have everything in the lead but the score. And of the six for uh, 76 on penalties will kill you and the two turnovers, uh, both of those interceptions. So the Bobcats take over first and 10 on their own 35-yard line. Glad you could join us around the state tonight and all the Omega television parties and Billings at the Billings Hotel and Convention Center and in uh, Bozeman at the Bobcats Stadium. Three games the, in one night. The Wheeler House, everywhere, watching Omega. Joe called us. He did. So first and 10 for Montana State, the first play of the second half, and it goes to Ryan Johnson, and this is what Mike Kramer said, the team that runs the ball better, and that was a good comment, will win this football game. Well, that told you what he was gonna do. He was gonna come out and run the ball, and as you watch here, he counted on the left side of his offensive line to make a hole, but this is all Johnson. Johnson does a good cut there, another cut right there, as he gets it about 10 yards deep, and uh, the helmet, the chin strap up around the nose. I mean, this guy likes to get in there and just get nasty with everybody. He's, he does. He's a, he's a young man, a very nice young man, and he loves to run. Brings up second and less than the yard. So Johnson now after nine on first down is going to get it again on second down and just has a tiny hole that's going to get him enough. Still going. First. And he stepped out of bounds at about the 44-yard line, but first down yardage for Ryan Johnson, the junior out of Fort Collins, Colorado. Well, Cardrick Foreman came out of the crowd. Johnson did a good job keeping his legs checking. You always tell those uh, running backs, keep your legs moving. Don't stop your legs moving. He proved it right there why you do that. He got hit at about the 50, and we'll see it here in the replay. He spun off it by keeping his legs going. It wasn't for Foreman getting him out of bounds. Now they're not going to be able to get to that replay, but Foreman pushes him out of bounds, or he's gone. First and 10, Montana State. First drive of the second half, Bobcats trail by four, looking for the first win of the season and to break that losing streak. Johnson on first down, good yardage once again. You know, here you go, you, you start at your own 35 on the penalty. You're down to the 38 and it's all been on three running plays. And what did coach say on his way out? Kramer said, we're a guy that runs gonna win. And here's why they're doing it right here. They're, they're bound to determine this running game's coming together. And with Johnson cutting back and forth like that, it's going to happen. And uh, the Weaver defense getting a stop put on there by uh, Dane Ferber. Johnson's had some big carries here to start the second half, as Ralph Brigham tells us. Is he is now close to 70 yards rushing in this one. Once again, it's Ryan Johnson, and this He's time back. nobody's fooled as he loses a couple. Well, that's that young man we were talking about earlier. We said his name a lot in this game. We're going to say it again, Corey Pantuso, 6'2", 230-pound junior from Long Beach, California. You'll see him come out right there. Gets him by the ankle, and he says, okay, guys, help me out. And coming in and helping out on this stop is Randy Spencer from Ontario, Canada, A. Eh? Playing a little football down here at Weaver. He made that tackle again, didn't he? Again and again. A. Eh? But that was a good uh, play by Pantuso. Pantuso has been a guy who's really uh, caused some problems for the Bobcat offense tonight. He's been everywhere. It's third down now and six for Montana State. Bobcats have come out running the football. Long count now by Tyler Thomas, and that's going to be a delay of game. I don't see, uh, they didn't throw the flag, but it's a delay of game against the Bobcats, and that's going to make it third and ten. As the ball back now to the 44-yard line for Montana State. And right now, for the Bobcats, it's the last thing they wanted. They wanted to come out on this first drive and use that running game, get, get that set in there, and then open up some passing. Third and five gave you a lot of opportunity for different things. Your whole passing attack changes at third and ten. Seven penalties now for 81 yards for Montana State. Ouch. Thomas now on the long third down play. Has some time, steps up in the pocket and gets the ball off and it's caught, but well short of the first down. It was Pat Karahassan. Karahassan makes his first catch of the ball game, but you're looking uh, at now third and about six, maybe seven. So now fourth down is uh, here you see Thomas, and he has some time to throw here. 
And the Bobcats appear to be going for it on fourth down and five. Actually, it's, they're keeping everybody out there, so they're not pulling it off. Fourth down five, Montana State. The first fourth down play of the ball game, which has either team going for the ball and another flag. Too many players? It's probably going to be a substitution penalty on Montana State. Illegal substitution. That's exactly the call. Cat, the Bobcats had 12 men in the field, uh, and there was like three seconds left on the play clock, and Kara Hassan was just running off. So instead of now being front team. fourth and five, now fourth and ten again. So now the Bobcats have been penalized eight times for 86 yards. Well, and on the punting side of things, they've had uh, Nate Cook has only uh, punted at one time for 35 yards, so this should put him deep in the hole. Line of, line of scrimmage is the 44-yard line, so the Bobcats drive stalls. A couple penalties really hurt there for Montana State. Good snap. And Cook, the punter, going for the corner. And it goes out of bounds at about the 14-yard line. Well, that was a good kick. He could have got about another 10 yards. He had a young man down there on his team ready to help him out. Is uh, K.J. Williams was standing down about the five-yard line, so it wasn't going past him. They're going to mark it at the 15. And the Bobcat defense will come back out on the field. The Wildcat defense uh, bent a little bit there but didn't break. And well, they and lead the penalties him. actually hurt them. The, the and another one of our great sponsors, the Helena Independent Record as they do a great job covering local sports, state sports, all the frontier, big sky, you name it. Think of the hell an independent record for all your sports news. And here, Bennett's now going to be chased by John Taylor, still running with the football. He's going to be bumped out of bounds there. I'll tell you, that was a naked bootleg all the way, and he freaked out. There were two Bobcat defenders that were both coming inside hard, and the defensive end who had contained sucked inside going down the line. If he would have stayed home, he had the sack but the quarterback ran right around him. And he moved pretty good for a six foot six guy, 220 pounds. Washington State leading Boise State 28 to six in the third quarter. Uh, big Sky play Idaho State on top of Montana Tech 34 seven at half. And You know, this is how I'd like to be dressed this afternoon here from Nelson Stadium, the Carroll College Fighting St. Pep Band. They've done a nice job all afternoon, entertaining a crowd of uh, pretty close to 4,000 on hand to debut the new Nelson Stadium here on the campus of Carroll College. J.D. Emmert will bring his squad out with a first and 10, the ball on about the 15-yard line. Carroll has moved it, but hasn't had much chance getting it into the end zone as Carroll makes the reception. And he'll get about four, Jay, on uh, first down. Not only just going to try to scoot the ball up a little bit, maybe get it away from the goal post ever so slightly. Worry about punting out uh, first of all, and then start getting field position. But they have been able to move the ball with some con Got NAU this year. Second down, seven now for Weber State. Bennett will hand off to Gray. Gray had a pretty quiet first half. He made a couple big runs, but here he gets maybe one. Well, he ended up at 31 yards total. He had a couple good uh, runs, but he stepped out of bounds about six yards into him. <laughs> and he, as they're going to say, no gain in the play. So third down, maybe even losing a yard. Third down, seven for Weber State. 11-13, just underway here in the second half. Bruce Parker along with Ron Davis, Joe McClafferty, Ralph Brigham. And I don't know, maybe 13,000 fans here at uh, Stewart really Stadium. Open up the new, the new press box. From the shotgun, Bennett has some time now being chased Taylor. again by Taylor. Throws it away. Yeah, throw it away. Taylor had Taylor had him in his sights. He had no time to set up and throw that. Great defensive stand by the Bobcat up front group. And great coverage downfield. I mean, as you saw, great coverage down on the defense. Joey Thomas was all over his guy. Justin Mobley was in good position. There was nobody open. He had to throw it away, or Taylor was going to introduce him to the turf. And how about that camera coverage by Troy and Neal tonight from up top here? I think they're outside somewhere. I saw some camera platforms out there. Troy with the gloves on, working the camera. And the punt. Fair catch signal four by Junior Adams. And we'll take a break. 10.45 left on the PPL Montana scoreboard. Weber State continues to lead by four over Montana State. What if they could email your office? Here are those numbers you wanted. Call your office. 
Financing's all set. We're ready to move. But reach you here. With Quest Wireless, they can. Now get Browse Now Wireless Internet only from Quest and get office email anywhere on the only phone that can use the office number you already have. Get the wireless communications to change everything. Only from Quest Wireless. Sign up now and get 1,500 minutes, including domestic long distance, for only $39.99. And how about that good-looking structure, the Weber State University brand-new press box. We're up she here. Wish waving. You, wish you could be here, and you kind of are on Omega t uh, Sports Telecast. As the Bobcats will take over, and there you see, I mean, it's impressive. We're on the sixth floor, up in the nosebleed section. Good field position for the Bobcats on the, their own 46-yard line, and Thomas is going to go to the air. Has some time, has a receiver downfield. It's Corey Smith. It's intercepted. And it was in nope. and out of the hands of a couple different people, Corey Smith being one of them. Actually, uh, Charles Boughton, the cornerback, 6'185 185-pound junior from San Jose, he had it, that ball in his hands. Smith did a good job knocking it back out. He's already got one tonight. How many more does he want? I got to tell you, though, Junior Adams wide open him on the sideline, far side. He had his guy beat by about 10 yards. See how close he came to catching this ball. I think that, uh, boy, anybody could have got this one. Defender has the ball right there. Smith does a good job stripping it away. He almost came down with that. Wow, good effort there by Charles Bowden. Second down 10 now for Montana State. They're gonna go off to Johnson. Johnson cuts back, still on his feet, and gets up close to midfield. He's just a fun runner to watch. He does a lot of cutting and stripping of people. On that one, he had a guy that had his eyes on him. Come flying up there, it's uh, Mike McFadden who had his eyes on him and he made a miss. Ball just shy of midfield. And it'll be a third down and long again for the Bobcats. Third down and six. That's some interesting scores. Come in, we'll have to talk about here after this play. Oregon State leading New Mexico State 14-0. That'll be the Bobcats' opponent next week in Corvallis, Oregon. Thomas. And he had some receivers open, but he had to get rid of it because the pressure came quickly for Weber State. Farber. Dane Farber now. He was right on him. He put the heat on him, and Tyler just had to get rid of him. Well, another score you're looking at there was uh, Sac State getting pounded by Cal Poly. 20 to 0. Cal Poly on top of Sacramento State. How about this one? Southern Utah beat the Wildcats last week, losing in the second quarter to Mesa College, 10 0. So Nate Cook will be in to punt, standing back at about his own 35 yard line. Good snap from Dusty Dawes, and the kick's a good Great one. Kick. And the ball's going to be down. It'll be inside the 10-yard line, right, right at about the five. five. What a kick. What Great a job. Kick. 50 or 45-yard punt from Nate Cook. 9.40 left in the PPL Montana scoreboard. Weber State holding on to that four-point lead over Montana State. kinds of interesting information about the hill and about all of southwestern montana bruce sailor the sports editor does a good a, job a lot of fun to read the montana standard bennett now off on first down gets the ball off that was quickly to harrington and he picked up some good yardage on first down bruce most teams when they're sitting on the five yard line looking at first and ten will try to run the ball out of there especially with their backup quarterback in the game and their starters standing on the sideline what a gutsy call by the offensive coordinator and the, uh, the squad from Weaver. You're first and 10 at the five yard, yard line, you're coming out of the hole and you pass for seven. J.D. Sollers, we'll talk about J.D. in a minute, has some Montana ties, the offensive coordinator for Weaver State. Harrington now comes wide to the right side on second down and about four. So movement on the line is going to cost Weber State five yards, and that Boy, one. That's the guy that you know when he moves, he's in trouble because he's at the end of the line. It was Chris Rhodes, the sophomore from L.A., 280-pounder. Well, that kind of that kind of mass moves, you know it. J.D. Sollers started his collegiate career at Montana Tech. Uh, that's right. All-America punter, led the nation in punting one year and rushed for over 1,000 yards in his two years and then transferred to Eastern Washington. That's right. And he went on to be a great player as a linebacker for Eastern Washington. And I bet you his name was in the Montana Standard once or twice. I would imagine they were. Hud Wiltsy, what might have been the sports uh, editor then? Uh, Hudson Edgar. Wiltsy. And Edgar. Jim Edgar, they that's were right. back then. The Montana Standard. Great Hudson, job. Hudsey invented newspapers, you know that? He was around there that long. They covered local like <laughs> no man's business. Second down now in about eight. 
And they're going to throw long. It's a good throw. And good. Oh, they're going to call a flag there. There's a flag going to be whistled because on the coverage, running down the sideline is Jay Hackett. And he had his left arm on the arm of the receiver. Bobcat coach is not happy about that from coach the sideline. Coach Kramer's really not happy. Here's his again. You see the throw. We don't see a lot right there. See that arm? Pushing him with the left arm. He had his arm on the receiver. And that's what they're calling for. Now, earlier, that was Greenberry, but earlier they were bumping each other like crazy and they weren't calling it. And then they turn around and call that one. Interesting because, you know, one thing Mike Kramer doesn't do is get on the officials too much. So usually when he does, he's, there's, there's some validity to it. So he was he was right there. I'm not he, sure that there was much contact. That other angle was better because you could see the left arm. And nevertheless, another penalty. And that's going to put Montana State very close to or over 100 yards in penalties, and we've played less than three quarters. And the worst part about that is, is you were looking at third and about seven from deep in your own territory, brings the ball out to the 22-yard line where it's first and 10 for Weaver. So that's another one of those penalties that could, without that penalty, the ball's overthrown, and you're going to be looking at a punt. So it turns things around quite a bit. First down and 10 now for the Wildcats after the penalty. Harrington split wide to the right side for the Wildcats. Gray's been pretty quiet here in the second half. And a fumble, the ball on the field, and it's still loose. And Weber State recovers it back near the 10-yard line. And I'll tell you, Bennett was popped. Yeah, he was hit. McCafferty hit him and hit him hard. And he knocked that ball out of there. He popped him. And you know, the other good thing is supposed to be a quick out and great secondary coverage. You won't see the coverage, but watch this hit. There's McCaffrey. Buries his helmet right into the ball, knocks it free. All the way back, they're going to say he was down at the 14. The ball was fumbled back to about the 10, but they'll bring it back up to the 14-yard line. I don't know. I don't know. They saw the beanbag go down. I think they called it a sack. Now from the shotgun, Bennett on second and long. Has some time. Has a receiver streaking across the middle. J.J. Williams there for Montana State. And again, they're looking at Damon Greenberry. Greenberry has been the go-to guy here the last three times they put the ball up. And that time the ball just overthrown. But he had his man. Just went a little too, went a, the ball went a little further than he could get. Greenberry's been big tonight for the Weber State offense. There you see him coming off the field. He caught a big pass back in the first quarter when they needed a first down. They had a nine. He got him ten. So they, they can go to this one, man, as he comes out after the breather. Tate Bennett, the sophomore, been at the helm all night tonight for the Weber State offense. Third down and long, let's call it 18. They're going to give it to Gray. Gray has one man to beat, and if he gets outside, he's gone. Well, I'll tell you what, he came close to being gone. He, they didn't get the help but to get over there as Mobley to push him out of bounds. He was gone. He'll get it out to the 30-yard line. Watch this as he gets a great block right up front here, right there, the seal. And then he gets outside, and he gets around the corner. And, you boy, as a corner, you, when you have campaign, uh, can, campaign, uh, contain, get it out, right? K.J. Williams, let him get outside, and he can't let that happen. And the punt team comes in now for Weber State. Back deep is Junior Adams. Adams going to be able to return this one. Stutters now gets a block, makes a good cut. Adams up now near midfield, and he'll be pulled down at about a 49-yard 49, 49 line, and that's where Montana State will take over first and 10. And, you know, another good tackle by the wide receiver who plays special teams for uh, Weber State coming up making their stop was uh, Foreman. And we'll take a break as both teams now talking things over on the sideline of the PPL Montana scoreboard. There you see it. 7.49 left here in the third. Bobcats starting from the 49-yard line. 17 seconds left on the play clock as it appears Tyler Thomas is changing the play. And on first down, Thomas short drop, finds Corey Smith, and Can't Smith drops the ball. Those are two that Smith has had over the middle that he's had not been able to hang on to. Joe McClafferty on the sideline, or wherever. MSU uh, defensive lineman. Tougher watching than playing, buddy? Yeah. Uh, my chest hurts. My voice is going away. My heart's beating about 1,000 miles an hour. I can't handle it anymore. But we're doing all right right now. We're right in this game. We're making a lot of mistakes. I think we'll be okay. Nick has an ankle injury. He'll be back in three weeks. Uh, well, it's getting better. I'm, I'm, I'm shooting week to week. I'm trying to come back next week if I can't. 
I'm going to be back for Cal Poly for sure, which is our first home game. We'll get healthy and get playing. Thank you. Back up top. Nick Morosco, the Bobcat senior captain out of Glendive. He was injured last week, and I'm not sure where that one was going, but the flag is down, and it appears it's in the area of a hole. Yeah, it's down there where uh, somebody was got caught with their hands on it. Actually, it was on the swing around the outside out there it was the uh, big defensive end. Big number 92, uh, Randy Spencer, and he's the guy that was held. I know that much. I didn't catch the Bobcat that was doing it, though. Nick Morosco uh, chop blocked last week against Alabama Birmingham right into the ankle. Well, he's hurting, but he's, he's uh, really fighting hard to come back. He's an inspirational leader on the Bobcat team. Uh, missed last season, got the medical red shirt, and we'll take a listen to uh, what the call is. Illegal use of the hands against Montana State. Uh, it was Paul Gertz was the guy that they called on. He was the guy out there with him. So the, the penalty going to bring it way back, but make it second in a short bus ride. But penalties have really hurt Montana State today. And, and really, uh, the penalties have hurt both teams more in Montana State than Weber, as Montana State has had so many good drives destroyed by them. Well over 100 yards now in the penalty department for the Bobcats. Thomas. Looking to set the screen, and they get it off to Johnson, and it's uh, snuffed oh, out quickly. What a play coming in first off right and putting a hit on a Johnny Maddich, and then finishing is Matt McFadden, two backup guys who uh, get a little play time, and they're taking advantage of it, and they've dropped it back for a loss of three more. There you see Ryan Johnson, not much room to run there. You know, I don't, I don't know the, the play call, I guess, Bruce. In my mind, you're looking at the second and 20. Down, you picked up a couple of 40-yard go. passes going to Adams. I would have had two shots at Junior Adams if it was my call. And it's third down now in a cab ride, third and 24, all the way back at the 37-yard line. Adams solo out there, one-on-one. -on -one. Oh, almost intercepted and get in front of the ball and getting his hands on it and swatting it down for the uh, Wildcats. It was Sylvester Daniels, a 5'11", 190-pound junior from Leighton, Utah. So almost got the pick. Nate Cook will come in to punt for the Bobcats. Foreman will be back deep for Weber State. The punt now will go from about the Bobcat 37-yard line, the line of scrimmage. There you see Foreman back deep. Good camera angle. Well, I don't know if I like either one of those last two calls by the Bobcats. They look for short passes, and they need a lot of yardage. Not a deep kick by Nate Cook, and it's going to go out of bounds. It's going to go way up. We're going to keep things way right here. As the coaching staff trying to show them where to spot it for Weaver. Right at about the 40-yard line. And that's where the Wildcats will take over first dead good field position. Center in Billings and Kalispell. Now you, you're kind of part of the jet set now because you got to fly on your private plane. Yeah, I, you're not kidding there. We'll never get you. We'll never get you out on commercial plane again. Johnny Gray the third picks up a couple that tough yards for Weber State on first down. And the guy that we like was in there on the stop, Chad Glum, redshirt freshman from Park City. There we see Pete in the end zone, high above the goal post. Provided us that last shot in that punt. Pete gained so much weight this summer, they had to put two of those little lifts there to hold it. <laughs> so now second down and seven for the Wildcats. Neither team has done much offensively here in the second half. Bennett, again with pressure over the middle, gets it to his tight end. And he's wrapped up. That was Josh Rebholtz. He's a 6'6", 250-pound sophomore from Scottsdale, Arizona. And this young man was not going down for anything. We'll see it again as the big guy comes across the middle. Plenty of time for Bennett. The time is standing there, hits the big guy, and he's wrapped up right away. And those are slouches on him. Those are the best hitters on the team. Kane I own in on the stop and he had some help there by Kyle Ecker who both are tough hitters the big boy wouldn't come down first and ten inside Bobcat territory on the 47 yard line Ray Holtz is in motion for Weber State they're going to give it to Gray and Gray's hitting the backfield by Mike McCafferty you can hear McCafferty screaming all the way up here as he uh, he did a good job coming down the line and just getting that wrapping up the ankles and dragging him down as you'll see it here there's McCafferty coming down the line. Gets him around the waist, drags him down for a loss of about a yard. Out of Pleasanton, California. He's pretty fired up. Been out, uh, didn't get to play uh, last week. It's his first game, and he's pretty jacked. He thinks this is the game. He's fired up to get after. There's Big Mike coming off the field. K.J. Williams in to replace him for Montana State. 
you know he wants back in. Bennett, short drop, the ball is thrown in and, and knocked away. K.J. Williams there for Montana State. The pass was intended for Ryan Nath, but it was a little bit high, and uh, Williams right there on the good coverage. Yeah, Nath was, the ball, the ball was a little high on Nath, and Williams came out and swatted at it anyway. I always like the teams that use the big tight end. Yeah. You know, the guys that can go across the middle, get five, six, uh, seven, eight yards. Well, remember last year, Weaver had the All-America tight end, and Prince scored three touchdowns at MSU last year. He single-handedly dismantled the uh, Bobcats in the second half with those three touchdowns. Outstanding. I believe he's playing in the NFL he's, somewhere right He's now. an animal. He should be. And the shotgun, Bennett, on third and long, third and about 11. Pressure. Up the middle, and it gets the pass off, but uh, good coverage as Greenberry got hit by a couple Bobcats, Joey or Justin Mobley and Kane I.O. John Taylor put a pop on that. John Taylor came up on the drive. You watch, you'll see Taylor fly by. Right there's Taylor. And bam, Kane I.O. puts a little pop on, gets some help from Justin Mobley. And Junior Adams back deep now to receive the punt. It's a hollow, dark, concrete hallway, and the footsteps were loud. Good high kick. Fair catch call for by Justin Ooh. and he's gonna get trouble for that one. He, he, Yeah, he's going to get in trouble for that one. You, you can see Coach, I can see him from here right when he went after it. Shaking his head after 10 yards, leave it go. That one would have went into the end zone. Instead, you're going to have the ball at the five-yard line. You down it nicely for me. You watch, Coach Kramer's going to meet him over there on the sideline have a few words. Junior Adams talking now with Mike Kramer on the sideline. <laughs> you can see Kramer shaking his head all the way up here. There you see some of the good crowd on hand here. You know, this might be something that the Bobcats needed because their last three possessions were all short yardage, short field. They're out near midfield on all three of them. This time they've got to go 95 yards. Maybe that'll change things up and they'll be more focused. Wildcat cheerleaders have put the coats on. It's chilling up a little bit here in Ogden, Utah. So did Joy, Joy put his on. I think he's got the hat on, too. Ryan Johnson on first down gets good yardage oh, up right the middle. Here, Boy, did he get a hole right Ryan up the middle? Johnson. He followed his big center as he, he came through the middle there, and Ryan Henning just got right behind him and kept going. You see Derek's there. Come, Dirk's coming back after Dirk's help lead him. Big hole, and he followed you know, I look at uh, the uh, new scoreboard here at the stadium, Elizabeth D. Shaw Stewart Stadium. I would hate to sign checks if I were with all those names. That would make it a lot. I'd be mean, a chore, but a, a tremendous supporter of uh, athletics and all kinds of charities in the state of Utah. The, the D family, they have been just wonderful. As Ryan Johnson's going to get a first down and give a little breathing room. Well, he's, he has about to about the 22-yard line. Once again, they're just doing off-tackle, both sides. That time coming to the left side, and they come across there behind Swagger, and he led the attack. The uh, D family, you see the McKay D Hospitals in town here, yep. the D Event Center at Ogden, Utah, and this wonderful stadium. And, uh, you know, anymore, it, it takes those people in the community, those people that have been a part of the life of the community, to order to, uh, in order to afford the type of things that you need to compete. Ryan, very expensive. Ryan Johnson on first down gets maybe a, a yard up to about the 25-yard line. Let's see where they mark it. You know, back home at, at Montana State, you're totally aware of what it costs to build a, a quality facility because you guys just did it. You, you yourself put a lot of work in the game. Of yard. And we're still, if, if I won the lottery the other week, I was going to name it after me and give him all the money to pay for it. What are you going to name it? The fat old lazy guy stadium? Is that what you're going to wonder it. You wonder it. How, how many people that buy a lottery ticket don't believe they're going to win? Everybody. I didn't. <laughs> That's why I'm here with you, you today, Ron. Spin, huh? <laughs> Tyler Thomas on second and long, well, still on his feet. Out. Now he's going to throw it. Man. And he gets it to Scotty Turnquist out of Billings Skyview oh, High School. And a flag is down the back near the 14. It's got to be a hole. I'll tell you what, though, Tyler Thomas checked off to five different guys. And uh, he and finally saw his man open. But before it could happen, there's going to be a clip penalty against the Bobcats. And it'll bring it all back. Well, when you turn around and you see a flag there, it's got to be bad news for the offense. Well, they just got the ball out to the 40-yard line. And again, what did we say earlier? Penalties have destroyed the Bobcats tonight. Here's another example. They're first and 10 at the 40. Now it's going to go all the way back down to about the 15-yard line. Hey, don't forget the U of M Hawaii game will follow this one tonight. It's a very Trump special Hawaii. event. The television presentation in both Hawaii and Montana is sponsored by Mountain Pacific Quality Health Foundation. 
Foundation will be reaching a very large audiences in both markets in their continuing effort to help people young and old to identify and manage diabetes. As Steve D, the head man at uh, Omega, says this is a real good cause. Played on the island of Maui, the game will be televised right after this one tonight throughout the islands. It's a big event for Hawaiian television as it is in Montana, so it should be a great one, and I know how important that is for the Diabetes Foundations. On uh, second down and long, 21. They're going to give it to Ryan Johnson. He has a hole up the middle. Boy, he had a chance there to really break that, but he does a good job getting 10, getting back out to the 22-yard line. He, he, he was going to try to break, break it outside. We'll see it here in the tape as he comes off. Great big, huge hole. Everybody pulls, seals for him. He comes up right here. He cuts it back inside. And boy, had he not had to cut that back inside, he could have got around the outside. He would have been gone. And he only had one guy to beat out there and uh, just couldn't get, get around it. So he picks up uh, quite a bit of the penalty. It brings up now third down and about 12 for the Bobcats. Tennessee State's had some penalty bugaboos here in the third quarter that have really hurt. Thomas gonna float it downfield to, turn, or to Toby Winters, and it's almost caught, but a good job defensively. It's knocked away there on the defense for Weber State was Sylvester Daniels, and that'll bring up a fourth down in a punting situation. There you see Toby, the transfer from Rocky Mountain College. He was an uh, all-frontier uh, conference wide receiver on a very successful Rocky team. But you know, the, the big thing there is you got to go back to that penalty. The clipping penalty brings the ball back. You had a first and 10 at the 40. Now you're punting away with your punter standing on the seven-yard line. Nate Cook to punt for Montana State. And a good snap. Ooh. Ball is going to go down inside the 50-yard line. And we'll go down on the sidelines to Joe McClafferty. Hey, guys, i got a special guest down here, President Jeff Gamble. Like throwing the dice, you said it's always a winner, oh, right, at MSU? Winner. What's going on at MSU right now? Well, we've got a lot going on, but the primary thing is we've just started up a new school year. We're getting into a strategic planning process. We're going to spend the, the next six to eight months, really take a look at the university and ask, where are we, where should we go, and how do we get there? And we're going to uh, invite the whole community to be part of the process. Now, uh, who's heading up this process? Well, well we have uh, two or three committees that already exist at the university, plus a new uh, planning and budget committee I put together uh, when I first got here in, in February. We had a new committee up, and uh, those groups together will start working on it. Well, fantastic. We wish you the best of luck. We wish the Bobcats luck. Back up top to Bruce and Ron. Thanks, Joe and President Gamble, as uh, Bennett gets around the left side and uh, turns it into gear number five as he gets good yardage all the way down to the Bobcat 35-yard line. Well, there's a hold up the middle that they got Bruce away with, man. Yeah, I'll tell you, I thought for sure the flag was going to go as there was coming up the middle. It was Chris Rhodes with a, it just hanging on to Taylor, but they didn't get it, and Rhodes gets the, the block to count and then run down to the 35, first and 10. And really right in front of the uh, official. It was right there. First and 10 now for the Wildcats in the 35. And it's uh, once again, it's Bennett. He's going to roll out this time to the right. Still on his feet. He's going to throw it downfield. Had a receiver open. And that was uh, Nath. But he just couldn't get it to him. I, I actually think Nath was running down the sideline. And he threw it to the inside. We have, do have a flag down over on the, about the 28. But the flag was thrown. When he threw that ball, he threw it away and the receiver was trying to get to it, but it was about 10 yards shot. And it's going to be against an eligible receiver downfield for Weber State. So the penalty will march it back against the Wildcats. Glad you could join us around the state of Montana tonight with this Omega Sports telecast, Rip Cook and the crew. We just do what we're told, Ron. We're just here to enjoy the game, the beautiful night, the stadium. We all came together from all over the uh, all over the country. You guys flew down uh, today, well, just hours before the game on the, the, the fun the plane. Did you guys call that the party bus? The no, bus. not yet. And this is what you call an ineligible receiver downfield. Look for this. We'll watch the receiver. Yeah, it's Josh Rebholz, but he's the tight end. He's the tight end, so it's not him. I think it was over towards the Bobcat sideline. Yeah, Rebholz is the big tight end. He's supposed to be there. So at the 40, it'll be second or first down now 15 for the Wildcats you know I was gonna say the rest of the crew came down from Pocatello a lot this morning and I came in from New Orleans so we've been coming from everywhere to do this one that's what those beads are right yeah that's what they're about okay you, you, you missed mask too. you the missed the Mardi Gras you were a little bit late this year I brought you some Cajun cooking you just have to provide your own uh, fire extinguisher all right I'm ready well they pick up the five yards they lost so it'll be second down now 10 
for the Wildcats. The ball just inside the Montana State 35-yard line, where it's now second and 10. Trips now to the right side as Bennett will go from the shotgun. Bennett now rolling right, has some time, and bounces the ball. I'll tell you what, but there's something you didn't Kevin see on that play. The Wildcats came with Herring six Kevin. people on the line. Right before the ball was snapped, they brought six guys up there bringing everybody. Down, nine Weaver did a good job. Bennett, just a sophomore, catching that and rolled it out a little bit. He just stayed in there. There was no pocket. Harrington was the intended receiver there. You see the Bobcat sidelines and second-year Montana State coach Mike Kramer. Very quiet third quarter. Yeah, neither offense with only 48 seconds left has scored here in the third quarter. John Rushing, the Bobcats secondary coach, sending in some signals. Beautiful night here in Ogden. This is football weather. Bennett now getting from the shotgun. Has some pressure, running out of time. Now throws it downfield. The ball is thrown up, and I think it's picked off. Justin Mobley gets his second interception. Boy, that was a tip ball. K.J. Williams got a hand on that. This is great. You got to see this. There were three Bobcats there on defense. And great pressure up front. Cordero. Ecker was on the blitz. There's the tip. Joey Thomas tips it. And Mobley comes away with it. Good defense. They had three guys there. Any of them could have come away with that one. You know, really not a terrible play for Weber State. No. You know, they, Although it gets the ball the inside zone, the 20. They're in the red zone hoping to come away with points. Instead, it's going the other way. Bobcats have it first and 10 now on their own 15-yard line. And they'll go right back to the run at Ryan Johnson. As Mike Kramer said, they're going to run the football in the second half. They're they have that counter trap Ryan up the middle, Johnson. and they're, they're pulling the two guys from the other side. you got to watch it. As, as you watch the handoff, see the two big guys pull and come across, and leading up the hole is uh, Che, and it just a trap. They bring it back across. That time you saw the big guys, Brian Che and Paul Dirks, come across on the pole and seal that middle. It's working. Unofficially, Ralph Brigham tells us 23 carries, 111 yards for Ryan Johnson. So it's been a big third quarter for the junior running back out of Fort Collins, Colorado. And it's first down. So it gets 10 there. And Montana State, with 12 seconds left, might not get a playoff to end this quarter. I'll tell you what, you see Brian Che pulling and come running at you, 6'4", 317. And he gets about a three-yard sprint. He can hurt you. I might get out of his way. You might. Johnson again on first down. It's a couple tough yards, and we've come to the end of our third quarter from Stewart Stadium in Ogden, Utah, on the campus of Weber State University. The PPL Montana scoreboard tells the story. We'll come back with our fourth quarter. Should be a good one. Stay with us. Hey, we're back here at Weaver's. We're ready to get back into play, but you know, our crew's ready to rest after a hard day of lugging the cameras and pulling the cords. The Comfort Suites of Ogden is located just off I-15 at 21st Street. 20 miles from where the men's and women's downhill will be run at the 2002 Winter Olympics. The large guest rooms have data ports, coffee makers, microwaves, refrigerators, and a whole lot more. We'll be resting tonight after a hard day's work over at the Comfort Suites in Ogden. You get a chance you should stay there, too. Again, just off I-15, just minutes from the Winter Olympics. And the first play of the fourth quarter, the Bobcats trail by four. They have the football on their own 30-yard line. Thomas now changing the play as he saw a blitz coming for a Weber State. And it still comes. Thomas now, short drop, is going to go down the field to Kara Hassan. And Pat Kara Hassan on the catch for Montana State in Wildcat territory. Pat Kara Hassan made a career catch there, and we're going to see it again. And this young man's been quiet the whole game. Kara Hassan hasn't done a whole lot as they haven't had a chance to go to him. But right there, what a catch. We'll see it again. Here comes, uh, they, they come on the blitz. They see it. They throw it out. They're stretching it out, giving it up for the team. Kara Hassan, big, big time catch. Junior wide receiver out of Billings West. He was great hands. Last year. And first and 10 now for the Bobcats as they're in Wildcat territory. And they'll go back to Ryan Johnson. Finds a seam inside the 40. And boy, he cuts into that hole quick. And at, at good size, Ryan Johnson for Montana State, 6'1", 210. You know, and the thing I like about Johnson is his quick side to side. He saw that hole. He was supposed to go right off the guard inside. Said he goes outside the tackle because the whole inside didn't happen. And he just pops over there quick sideways and keeps going forward. Good crowd tonight at Stewart Stadium. 12,392 on hand to watch this Big Sky Conference opener. 
Watch the dedication in the new press box. Nothing fancy on these. Tyler Thomas is handing it off in the offensive line trying to do the job and Ryan Johnson doing his as he gets uh, another first down for Montana State inside the 25-yard line. The ball sitting right on the 25. Johnson with 100 yard rushing and then you're, you're, you're probably well over 200 yards uh, of passing now for Thomas. So it's been stat wise, the Bobcats are leading everything on the stats. We're just, and we just had them handed to us, but uh, we'll take a look at those and get back to you. But the scoreboard tells a different story. First and 10, Montana State. Thomas on first down again, hands off to Johnson. Johnson into the secondary inside the 25 yard line for Montana State. And after three quarters, Ryan Johnson had 114 yards and he's got uh, a couple big runs on this drive yeah, he has 22 right now on this drive we'll see it again as he gets the ball watch how he hops to the right right there hops to the right misses and just turns it up the field then dies for it knowing that he's going to get hit trying to get as much as he can out of it and uh total offense the bobcats 297 yards to 173 for weber after three and they're leading the battle of yardage they're just not getting it on the board on first and ten, Thomas takes his time again, goes off to Ryan Johnson, this time to the left side, and he gets a couple tough yards. Boy, and right there leading the attack for him, and out front is Paul Dirks, 6'6", 293, and uh, he was tripped up at the liner. He would have had a big blocker and a lot to go. Brian Marquard, the 6'3", 270-pound sophomore defensive tackle on the stop for Weber State. They just showed Matt McFadden, the big linebacker, half his jersey, the number two, Something torn off of it. He's just, you know, his clothes all ripped up. He's right in the thick of everything down there. Get blood. Snotty and bloody. Got, got, and this is natural grass, so he's got some grass stains, too. Thomas directing traffic for the Bobcats. The linebackers step into the hole, and they're going to go to Thomas or to Johnson again. And he's inside the 10-yard line, and the Bobcats will have it first down, goal to goal. I'll tell you what, they filled the gaps. The defense came up. They filled all the gaps. They figured they had them sealed. They're going to stop the run. They're going to take it away. And those big guys up front provide the hole. Everybody comes up. You see the big block there? He comes around the corner, and he gets, gonna get, just gets the yardage. A great, great block by Mike Quest. Quest hits a bit to get a block there. He didn't play last week. Got the hit right there to pop this. Big, big play. How about Ryan Johnson? Minus one yard rushing last week against one of the top defensive lines in all of college football, and he's coming back with a big one today. He's going to get another one. He's going to take it in. And Ryan Johnson is in for the touchdown, and the Bobcats have the lead. Ryan Johnson from about nine yards out. And you hear the Bobcat fans here at uh, Stewart Stadium. But Ryan Johnson, minus one against Alabama Birmingham last week. And you got to qualify that by saying they have two defensive tackles that could go in the first round. A UAB team that lost today to four, Florida State, 29 to seven. And he hops out right, breaks, breaks two tackles, and gets it in for the touchdown. But he could have been hit at the line, but he does. he's so good at getting people to miss him. He's, he's slippery. It, he takes a little step to the right. The guy misses him. He breaks two more tackles and gets in for the touch. E.J. Cochran, the ball put Bad down. Snap. The PAT is blocked. They, they, again, they're just not getting that snap back. And boy, that, that's, that was important because now a uh, field goal could win this. 19-17, Montana State on top on the PPL Montana scoreboard. Wells Fargo Sports Saturday. Lots of excitement still ahead here at Stewart Stadium. Here in 1970, do, do the uh, Bob, Bobcats and Cochran's going to kick it off. There you see the Bobcat fans on hand here at Stewart Stadium. Kicking game has been a struggle for Montana State this evening. And a good kick there by Cochran. Hangs it high. Yeah! Fumbled the at the five. Still on his feet and still on his feet. Out of bounds at about the 14 on the return. That was uh, Charles Bowden, as you see there, coming off the field. Gets knocked out of the 14. So right now, not really great field position for the uh, Wildcats. And, you know, we questioned, should they have gone for two? Here's the snap. It's just not handled. Snap was there. It was the snap right was spot. not bad. Holder just couldn't get it down. It was uh, Scott Turnquist just couldn't get it down. And, you know, you almost would have went for two there because uh, one would have made it a three-point difference forward. They'd had to go for a touchdown. Bennett now back in at quarterback. They start on their own 14-yard line. And he'll go right to the air. 
and find uh, Harrington, and Harrington gets good yardage up past the 20 to about the 22-yard line. Let's go down in the field to Joe McClafferty and a very good friend of ours. Hey, one of the beautiful things about Omega Sports is it's pure sports, and we got the fan of the game right here with us, Rhonda own. And the thing about the fan of the game, it changes people's lives, Rhonda. Okay. And, and we hope it changes yours. All right, I'm ready for that. But I'm actually enjoying this moment right now. The cats are on top, and that's what I'm here for. Yay, Bobcats! She has not been quiet the entire game, and because of that, she's just playing nuts, so this is what she gets. Thank you, she wins, fan of the game. Back up top. <laughs> hey, Joe, you got to tell her that. Thank uh, you very much. Joe, you got to tell Rhonda that, uh, you know, we're up here six floors, and we're in glass case, and I can hear Rhonda through the glass all the way up here. Season. My son, I don't see him anymore because he's working so hard to make himself a better ball player. Bruce Parker says he can hear you through the glass up there Absolutely. screaming. Absolutely, go Parks! <laughs> Back up top, guys. I want some of those peanuts. Joe, have some of those for the flight home. There's a penalty on the, the last <laughs> play, so it's going to march the ball back down to the uh, 16th. Do you guys don't get any kind of flight service? McClafferty, he's got to do That's part this of the game. Twice, oh, fumble, loose ball on the ground. And Gray fumbled it, and he's going to be hit in the backfield and uh, knocked and ripped out of bounds finally at about the 15-yard line. Taylor grabbed hold of his collar and swung him around. That's a pretty good effort there by Johnny Gray. He kept his feet moving, kept going, and uh, it took about three or four Bobcats to bring him down. Gray has really been held in check tonight. And we'll watch this. Once the ball's on the ground, it's awful tough. Yeah, and he's going to lose some yardage here. He doesn't get the, the pitch was there. Just couldn't hang on to it. Now here comes Taylor. Gets hold of his collar right at the shoulder pad. Almost loses him there, but then gets some help. Who else but Kane Ione, whose mother just got all the peanuts for being the nut of the game. <laughs> or the player of the game. Or whatever the, the, I the nut of the game. Come on. 1917, <laughs> the Bobcats lead. Third down long for Weber State, about 17. Bennett Lots has all kinds of time and bounces it to Harrington. It's incomplete. Thomas and Mobley there for Montana State. When you play indoor football, you have problems as uh, the uh, up at Idaho State in Pocatello, 40 to seven the score, but the power went out inside the dome and they've had to stop the game till they get the power turned back on. Bob Green didn't have anything to do with that, I'm did sure he? I'm sure he found the plug. Pulled the one plug they needed. The steel skies of the mini dome in Pocatello. The Wildcats will punt. Back deep is Junior Adams. Yeah, and a great low, field position. Low punt. Adams just gets out of the way. Now he's going to pick it up. He's inside mid to the 50 and still on his feet. Junior Adams can run. Has the punter to beat and he's, he's going to go in. No flags. I don't see a flag. Mike Kramer talked about it all week. He said the special teams, we can return one for a touchdown. And it came true as Junior Adams goes about 60 yards for the touchdown. You know what made that possible? The, that punt came down. He didn't go up underneath it. He let it bounce, and it took a hop, and everybody backed up thinking he was going to let it go, and he picked it up on the hop and kept going, and uh, that's what put it into the end zone, but he did the right thing when, when he did that. You could watch the defensive guys kind of slow down, thinking, okay, they're just going to let this roll. He took it on the hop and took off, and it was pay dirt. Pay what dirt. a run. There you see EJ great Cochran. blocks down the field. Junior Adams, the transfer out of Oregon State. 56 yards officially for the touchdown and the punt return. The snap's down, the kick is up. Hey, they got one. It's good. I'm happier <laughs> for that than anything else. And we'll take a break on the PPL Montana scoreboard. The Bobcats by nine over Weber State. So the nine point lead. Actually, they did make one the very first touchdown. Cochran will kick off. Bouton back deep for the Wildcats. We've seen it all in this game. Interceptions, fumbles, special teams. We've seen it all. Cochran kicks off, and it's going to be fielded at about the 15-yard line. And some good room there. And uh, coming down with it was Colton Swan, the up back, a linebacker, a sophomore out of Jerome, Idaho. Making the stop was uh, Brian Mole, 5'10", 185 junior from Salt Lake City, JC transfer. And good field position at about the 27 or 28 yard line for the Wildcats. Mo played JC ball, ball down in the Salt Lake last year. Where was he? Played junior college football down in this area. Yeah, and, he, and he came back up and he's playing for the Cats this year. And his father, a former Bobcat football player. They expect a lot of good things out of him. He's just still getting into the program, still getting used to the calls, but expecting a lot of good things out of him. So first and 10 for the Wildcats. 
As Bennett now once again will go from the shotgun. The Wildcats trailing by nine here in their home opener. And he's going to oh. be hit and dropped. Well, when things come apart, they come apart. And uh, coming in and just putting a hit on. Is that Cordero? It looked nope. like Kyle Ecker. It was. And we'll take a look at it. He didn't have much time here. And Ecker's right there on the blitz from the outside linebacker spot. Smith came from the other side. There was white jerseys all around. Boy, Ecker put a pop on him and takes it down inside the 20 to the 18. And right now, if you're Weaver, you need to, Mo is sitting over in Montana State's back pocket. You need to take it away. Wildcats reeling just a little bit here. It's been a long time since Mo's been sitting with the Bobcats. And again from the shotgun, a shovel pass is going to go to Gray. And Gray's going to get up past the 20 to about the 22 yard line. You know, we think we talked about this earlier, Ron, that the only time Montana State has opened Big Sky Conference play against Weber State and won was 1963. And it was right here. And now, of course, the Big Sky offices are here in Ogden. In Ogden, Utah. We had a chance so, to talk with Doug Fuller earlier That was actually tonight. the very first game of the Big Sky Conference. First, first year the Big Sky Conference was in existence. 1963. I think you were what? You were 28? I was one. Okay. All right. I was one. Don't you, hey, you've always been number one to all of us, Ron. Yeah. We're with you, man. No, I was number three for a while, but I'm getting, I'm getting better. <laughs> <laughs> Third and long for the Wildcats. Bennett again from the shotgun, and he's chased, and he's going to have to run, and he's got he's enough got room. Cordero got inside. Uh, Cordero had the outside contain, took his man inside, got into the pocket, but getting outside was Bennett, and Bennett runs it all the way out to the 40-yard line. He needed uh, a whole bunch, and he got it all. Now you got to remember, Bennett is six foot six, 220 pounds, and Tate just kind of tucked it in and took off that time. Well, and, and Adam Cordero had him out of the pocket. He, he took his guy inside, made a great move to get around the blocker. And Bennett saw it and popped outside of it and was gone. First and 10 Wildcats. Big play there by Bennett. He'll be under center this time. Gray the lone setback. Bennett will go back to pass, and he's going to throw the screen. And it is to Gray. And Gray's going to be stopped, I believe, for a loss. He, he's, uh, yeah, he's going to be for a loss. He's not going to get back in there to tie him up is uh, Kyle Ecker, who's had a great second half. But, you know, the thing there is Gray did a good job. He came out like he was going to block, released into the flat. He was open, but it closed quick. It did close quick. That shows quick. that speed up front for the Bobcats on defense. There you see the Weber State coaching staff, head coach Jerry Graybeal. Without the hat. It must be getting a little bit colder down there. They all put their jackets on. From the shotgun, second down, about 11 for the Wildcats. Espinosa chases, and the ball almost intercepted there by K.J. Williams. Boy, Williams made a nice dive on that one. I'll tell you who was coming, though. Keen Ione was coming on a safety blitz from the, this side. He got picked up, but when he got picked up, somebody else got free and put some pressure on Ione was trapped. There you go. There's the guy getting the pressure on up front. It was uh, Bob Espinoza. And then K.J. Williams almost comes away with it. There you see Bennett, the sophomore single caller. And he has uh, had a good ball game today, but he's been pretty ineffective except for running the ball here in the third, or third and fourth quarters. 8.30 left in this one in the fourth quarter. The Bobcats leading by nine. Bennett on third down. Has some time. Has the receiver open. He makes the catch. And then it drops down. And it's going to be good enough for a first down. And that was, I believe, Greenway again. Greenberry. Green Greenberry. Green Greenberry. And he was wide open. And what a great read by Bennett. As he comes over the top, you see Bennett floated out. You see Greenberry come in. He just stops and waits for the ball right in front of Jay Hackett. Makes the catch down at the 38-yard line of the Bobcats. Boy, a big throw and catch there for the Wildcats as they have it on the Bobcat 39-yard line, first and 10. That was two long third-down conversions for the Weber State offense. Bennett had time that time. He had good blocking up front, and that allowed him to look downfield. So Bennett now under center, no backs in the backfield. Gets it off, and it's dropped. Boy, it was there, too. He had the ball right on the numbers. That was intended for Mark Larson. Larson can't hold on. Larson also has such great hands as a tight end. Also the holder on extra points and field goals. You don't see many tight ends as a holder. I was just watching this stuff going on. Bennett walked up to Taylor down on the other side after all of his guys were back in the huddle. He's out there talking to Big Johnny Taylor. 
think, I think it was a friendly conversation. It had to be. Probably inviting them over for some hot chocolate after the game. Second down, 10 now. Bennett again from the shotgun. And has time. Has a receiver across the middle. Oh, no flags, incomplete. You, Bennett got punished, and he got punished hard. Putting a stick on him down low was Johnny Taylor saying, hey, thanks for the conversation. And coming in and finishing it off up high and putting a pop on in a big way was big number 50. I think it was uh, 55, Bob Espinosa. Hit him high, and boy, they laid Bennett down hard. So now the Bobcat defense with another big third down play facing them. And it's third and 10 for the Wildcats. And once again, Bennett will go from the shotgun, joined in the backfield by Johnny Gray the third. Here comes up, the middle. up the middle. And it's going to be caught, but well short of a first down of a pickup of about four. And now it's decision time for Jerry Graybeal. Do we try to get the field goal or do we go for it on fourth? And once again, the Bobcats with great pressure. John Montoya was on the legs of Bennett when he threw that, and the ball was off. The ball was off a little bit. Espinosa had him by the ankles, wouldn't let him step into it. 7.33 left. The Bobcats lead it by nine. Lots of time left here from Stewart Stadium. Fourth down, five yards to go. In November that moves our trucks all over Montana and the Northwest for wholesale and fleet contacts, heating oil, call Mike Allen at Allen Oil, 406-442-7703. Fourth down five, maybe the biggest play of the ball game. As Bennett now has some time on the short drop, gets the ball off across the middle, has a receiver, it's incomplete. He got crushed behind the line of scrimmage yeah. and good coverage by the Bobcat secondary. Once again, walking up, big Johnny Taylor was there with a hit. You know, the only guy that was really in position to catch that ball was Mr. Mobley, which would have been another interception for him. Justin Mobley, if he had turned his head, he would have had that pick, but you didn't have it. The ball's out further than he would have been otherwise. So the Bobcat defense makes the play. There we see some fans on hand joining us at Stewart Stadium this afternoon. Bruce Parker, Ron Davis, Joe McClafferty, Ralph Brigham, cast of thousands, ripping the crew. Troy Timmer, whose wife had a birthday yesterday. Anybody we're forgetting, Ron? No, I think you pretty much got everybody. Louise up there to Pocatello. Tommy John everybody. Connor, Bill Darcy, and the cast of thousands here from Ogden, Utah. First and ten, and I'm guessing we're going to see nothing but running the ball right here. Well, and I'll tell you what, for the one of the few times they stuck him and stuck hard, making the pop there, coming up and, and good, just getting a good stick. For Weber, did you pick out who that was? It was number 17, Eric Lonis. And he came in and put the put the pop on it, just put the wood to him. But Ryan Johnson go nowhere. But you know, Ryan Johnson has done a good job running this ball game over 120 yards. He's probably close to 130. We'll check with Ralph Brigham and get those rushing stats on Ryan Johnson, who's had a good ball game tonight. This junior out of Fort Collins, Colorado. Long count there by Tyler Thomas, and they're going to go to Johnson once again, and he's up close to the 40-yard line. Again, a nice run off the left side. He follows Swigert and Toyolo, and then uh, also uh, Brian Shea comes out with him. The clock now continues to run, and this is nothing but just a dive. You hand it straight off. You let the offensive line do their job, and Ryan Johnson's well, right behind They're him. pulling the right side. They're bringing the guys off the right side, uh, Brian Shea and uh, Paul Dirks, they both come off on the pole down that line, and you get all that meat on that side, and he just falls in. Mike Quast has had a good ball game tonight for the Bobcats. Time out for the Bobcats. At Montana State, there was only six seconds left on the play clock, and we're going to keep things right here. You know, we haven't talked about this yet, and, and I did it on purpose because we didn't really want to jinx anybody, but there's a streak that the Bobcats would like to see in. And I right now, up nine, they're going to do whatever they can to protect that that streak does end tonight. Actually, two of them. 14 losses in the conference and 18 overall uh, losses as a team since, since they've won last. Last Montana State win, October 1999. And uh, Coach Kramer and the crew looking to break that string. Next week, Montana State will be on the road and Omega will have it. That's right. The Bobcats and Oregon State in Corvallis, Oregon. There you see the Bobcat offense over talking with Coach uh, you Coach know, Damberger. Looking at our schedule for Omega this year. Don Bailey. The Bobcats, the Grizzlies, and a lot of the Frontier teams getting a ton, a ton of air time. And, uh, boy, when they're on the road, you can watch them home. UAB and the Bobcats this week at Weaver. There's a whole lot of it. And there's a lot of uh, 
Weber fans heading out early as you see the far sidelines where the uh, fans are starting to move towards the exits. Yeah, there's still a lot of time left. I don't think, uh, I guarantee you there's one team that's not uh, put their shoulders down. That's the uh, Bobcats. They know they've had too many games taken away at the end. Third down and about four for Montana State. The ball on the 40-yard line for the Bobcats. Thomas has Ryan Johnson in the backfield. Taking some time off on this one, running the football. Johnson, he'll have the first down and much more for the Bobcats. Close to the 48-yard line, first and 10 Bobcats. Another big run for him off the left side. Dane Fraber gets the stop. He's going to see this big hole open up. There's the big block inside. And there's Fraber coming up and also getting some help in there with the hit. Was uh, coming across to Spencer Segoda. But a first down and the clock keeps running. Not sure about the timeouts left for the Wildcats. Looks like they have one timeout left. Maybe two. Two timeouts for Weber State. Yep, two for each team. Special thanks goes out to our sports information director for both schools, Brad Larson from Weber State, and Bill Lamberty, former Montana State Bobcats. Ryan Johnson into the secondary, into Weber State territory, all the way down inside the 40, and a first down Montana State. You know, and he could easily been gone if Sylvester Daniels, the 5'11", 190-pound junior, didn't climb on his back. He had one guy to beat, and he was looking like he was going to get there. Takes that ball all the way down. You know, he's having a great day, but the guys that are having even a better day, the big guys up front, Brent Swagger, Mateo Toy to, uh, to Lolo. Toy Lolo, is that how we say That's, that? You got Gotta it. Gotta make sure I get it right. Ryan Henning, Brian Shea, and Paul Dirks, they're the guys having the game. And I guarantee you that as classy as Ryan Johnson is, is he, they're the guys who give credit to. We'll try to have uh, Coach Kramer, Ryan Johnson, maybe a couple other Bobcats, and there's a whistle. And it was before the shot or the, the play clock expired. Not sure what it was. That came over on the defensive side of things. Somebody's either moving on the offensive line or we have encroachment. Looks like it's uh, Montana State. Somebody on the line did a little hop there. The head came up. And that's exactly what it was. And the Bobcats five yards marked off against Montana State. You know, what's interesting is at the half, what did uh, Coach Kramer tell us? The team that runs the ball successfully in the second half will win this football game. And their last drive, the Bobcats ran it all the way down. So far in this drive, yet to throw a pass. It's all been the running game. And it's been Ryan Johnson. It's been a successful running game as well. And an offsides there is going to be called on, I believe, on Weber State as they snap the ball. And again, Tom, uh, Thompson, uh, Thomas with a great job. That's what, the third time he's done that today where he sees a defense come up and he just quickly takes a snap and takes a knee. Heads up play is there you see Jerry Grabiel, the coach for the Wildcats of Weber State. The rushing yardage for Ryan Johnson today, Ron, has been pretty impressive. Well, yeah, 35 times, 190 yards, and he's not done yet because that man right there said, we're going to run the football. That's Coach Kramer, and he was bound and determined that his squad was going to run the football this season, and today, tonight, they've done it. 190 by Ryan Johnson. That was against Montana State, and it's now Johnson again right up the middle. He picks up five more. So Johnson, tough running. He's uh, getting close to the 200-yard mark. And you see him come up the middle with a great shot from the end zone. Our camera guys are getting better and better every year and doing a great job picking up the shots for us. And he just kind of runs into the stack. They'll probably give credit to Brett Shaw, who uh, made the, uh, the stop. We're going to check the, the, the uh, Bobcat press guide and find out when the last time a Montana State running back has rushed for 200 yards, because Johnson's getting pretty close to that right now. I'm, right, I'm there already. And this time it's going to be Tyler Thomas. Tyler's going to throw down in the end zone. Junior Adams is there, oh. in and out of the hands of Junior Adams. Yeah. And that'll bring down a third down. We're going to go down now to Joe McClafferty. Hey, gentlemen, I've been wandering the sidelines over here in the Weber side, and the, the run, every time the Bobcats run and pick up some yardage, it's demoralizing over here. You can see the Weber players, they have their heads down. They, they, they're losing all of their uh, enthusiasm because of the run. So another thing that the run is doing, it's taking the guys on the sideline out of the game for Weber. Back up top. And now a third down for the Bobcats, third down and about five. That's the first pass play that they've had here in this drive, and it's just off the fingertips in the end zone. 
So third and five now for the Bobcats. Thomas is going to fake the handoff. Now gives it to Johnson. Johnson into the secondary. He'll have another first down for Montana State. Boy, he makes a great spin move at about the... Uh, 30-yard line and, and spins ahead for another five more off of that. So he picks up another eight, nine yards, well over 200 yards on uh, Johnson on the run, and he's getting the job done. Brian Johnson had four 100-yard rushing games last season, was injured in about the seventh game, and we're still trying to check that. We'll try to find Bill Lamberty. Uh, Bobcats' Kirk Copeland had 234 against Idaho State in 87. So it's been 1987, the last 200-yard rushing game for the uh, Bobcats. Kirk Copeland, he was a good one. He was good. A transfer out of Ricks College. Again, Johnson's going to get the ball. And again, he's going. He could go all the way this time. I don't see any flags. Touchdown, Bobcats, as Ryan Johnson goes in from 25 yards out. And the Bobcats, it appears, will break the losing string with an impressive performance tonight. Led by this guy right here, Ryan Johnson. What a block on by Adams downfield. And Adams sealed the outside. Johnson got outside. That's the first time we've seen him go outside. He's been staying inside the whole game. Breaks it for 25 yards. Could have gone another 25 more. There was nobody near him. And the Montana State University Bobcats will break that 18-game losing streak and will get their first win in the conference after 14 losses. And I'll tell you what, it's just, oh, another bad snap. And, and that one wasn't the snap. I think it was, uh, again, Turnquist having a hard time getting on the ball. But the Bobcats have really put a lot into this. This group of young men have really worked hard and really put a lot of effort into changing the whole attitude of football at Montana State University. I said uh, when Kramer came in on my morning radio show that he would, in three years, have this team competing in the top two to three spots in the conference, and they're here. And the, the thing about this is that last week's game doesn't matter. Next week's game doesn't matter. And uh, this is a Big Sky games. Conference game. Okay. <laughs> That's interesting. <laughs> we were just told they lost all the power at Idaho State. The power's out. They have now called the game. It is over, 40 to 7. I think one of the Montana Tech Ortiger fans went and found the power box. I'm not sure, but 40 to 7, the final. It's over because they can't get the power back on at the stadium. That's going to make plays of the week, I'll guarantee you. <laughs> oh, boy, that's a dandy. AJ e. Cochran will kick off. A game for the called on darkness in an indoor arena. And an indoor arena. <laughs> wow. I'm going to go in the record books. Cochran will kick off. Mountain back deep to receive for Weber State. But a huge win for Mike Kramer and his Bobcat football team tonight as they open Big Sky Conference play with a victory. Back to 1963, and this one isn't over yet. We could go all the way here. Mountain being chased by Kane Ione, and Ione bumps him out of bounds inside Bobcat territory. At the 40-yard line, and that's where they'll be first and 10 for Weber. And really, again, the Bobcats can't afford to relax because this Weber team can put some points up. Bennett coming in as a backup quarterback has had a great evening, and he can throw some points up at any given time. So the Wildcats now will start off with good field position. Let's see where they mark it. Should be right by the 40. They're going to say the 42-yard line. And that's where Bennett will take over first and 10. Wildcat offense really has stalled here in the second half. They led 17-13 at halftime. The Bobcats have had a big second half. And that was all in the running game, and that's what Kramer told us at the half. The team that runs, it's going to win it, and they did. Bennett now is just down. smothered. Every Taylor got to him first, and then everybody else came in to help him out. Everybody in the place knows what's going to happen. That's an advantage for the off or the defensive line. Now, we're going to give that sack. We're going to bring in a guy who's been playing tough up front, John Montoya. Montoya has played a whale of a ball game, the 6'3", 241-pound sophomore from Brandon, South Dakota. We're going to give him that sack as Taylor got there first and flushed him, but Montoya cleans it up. Second down long now for the Wildcats. Bennett will go from the shotgun. Wildcats will drop to 0-2, Montana State 1-1. One one. Bobcats bring in six. Bennett's pass, good effort there, but the pass incomplete. Smith on a coverage. That was Larson again as he dove to get the football. Yeah, the big guy had his hands on it, but couldn't hang on to it as he hit the